If you don't want to hear this, Dylan, I can stop. I'm trying it to is. get to a broader point here, Dylan. No, it's not. It's no, gonna, it's, not. No, it's gonna not. be hypocrisy. No, it's not. Yeah. No, it's not. You have to understand where that's coming from. It's not coming from, as you said, well, he just wants to be God. No, they were it actually is. legitimate why? An unfair advantage. Because why? The, because why are the mail-in ballots bad? The it way. makes it easier for them to do what they want to do. It makes them easier for them to fulfill their. Not to, to vote. vote. I mean, you're not being epistemically humble here. You're being really, I think, I'm not going to insult you, you're being really arrogant. That doesn't make them an not, idiot. But there's not substantial evidence. That doesn't evidence. make them an idiot. It does make them an idiot. There's no, no, there's no rational basis for it. Yes, there is. There's, yes, there's there no is. evidence for it. You don't just need the possibility of something being true. You don't. Okay, okay. Can, can I see any evidence? I don't think that the election was stolen, but I think there's <laughs> reasons, rational reasons, people can think so. Hello. Hello, Dylan. How are you? I am quite well. I'm quite well. How, how have you been, uh, Mr. Watson? And I have been good. I have been very good. It's good to be here. I saw that uh, recently you, um, I just wanted to ask you about it. You gave an opinion, I think, about, um, well, well, it was a cancellation of student debt, wasn't it? That's right. That's right. And you, um, got, you got a lot of traction on the internet for that. <laughs> Putting it lightly. Um, yeah, I made a video and I posted a, a tweet, uh, a little small clip of that video and, um, people didn't like it very much and I faced the consequences of that. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't say that. Some people did like it. Um, but a lot of, uh, as always, it's black Twitter that makes, that makes these, uh, these things seem more worse than they actually are as always. It, it was black Twitter. What do you, what do you mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is that, you know, so there's something called Black Twitter, which is basically, and you'll see there's a bunch of articles written by, about it, too. It's basically the sort of social justice, you know, more younger African-American based on Twitter that tends to call people out for many different things. They call out celebrities. They call out political figures, mostly on the right, but also on the left. Um, Black Twitter attacked um, Van Jones um, for being too kind to Republicans. So it's not just people on the right that get this stuff. It's also people on the left that get it as well. Um, but yeah, it was it was what is colloquially known as Black Twitter, um, and that's okay. Well, um, I, I do know I do know like of Black Twitter's existence. I, I think I'm I guess I'm in segregated Twitter. Um, I, I've never I didn't see any <laughs> well, sign. Maybe, maybe. maybe. but. Maybe. As far as I know, it's like it's not like a political ideology or like a political subset. Like it's not. I, I've seen people. I mean, I just like what is black? Number one, what is black Twitter? Like, are you just a black person who posts on Twitter, or because I've there, there's a lot of black people on the internet who are conservative or Republican. I sure. I see them all the time. To much of many sure. of those occasions, to my disdain. Sure, sure, there are plenty, but black Twitter is a colloquial term that generally means a particular subset of Twitter. That happens to also have a lot of, you know, the African American dominated. Um, it's a thing. It exists. Um, I mean, there are articles in the Washington Post about it. Like it's a, it, it, it's a thing. Um, I don't know how really to describe it. It's more of an abstract idea than anything else. But it's a thing. It exists. Um, but yeah, it's it's most of it was just insults anyway. Um, yeah, you know, it's most it's, people didn't. It seemed yeah. they they uh, were. It was mostly about like age, I believe. They were saying you looked older. Yes. Yeah, why hmm. do you th why do you think um, they centered in on that? Well, there's a few there's a few possibilities. Um, one, they don't actually have a rebuttal into what I have to say. Uh, number two, they didn't bother to actually listen to what I had to say. And actually, that's the case because there were several commenters that said, "I don't even look at your stuff. I already know it's going to be in the first few seconds." And that kind of dismissiveness does not lead you to anywhere but a dead end. Um, it's important to consider the opinions of those you want to critique. Um, because if you don't, you'll always be attacking straw men. And that's what they were doing. They were attacking straw men. They were saying, you look like you're an AERP recipient, which is, that's a first. And I, I never got that one before. They were saying, I look like a cancer patient. They were saying a lot, of, a lot of very, very rude, a lot of very rude things, saying that my black done cracked, so to speak. Um, I, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I, I feel fine. I don't know. Uh, no, saying no, it's funny. It's hilarious, actually. It's, it's, actually it's, really it's cruel. It's very cruel. <laughs> I, I don't mean to it's, laugh. It's funny. It's funny, actually. It's, oh, it's, it's, at this point, you just gotta laugh at this kind of stuff. It's, it's pretty funny. I mean, AARP, really, really, wow. Uh, I've I never heard I mean, your black cracked. I've never heard that one before. One guy was like, "You, you look like uh, you hadn't had student loans since the '60s," 
you know, the student loans 20 years old or are you, are you 20 years? <laughs> I mean, I'm like, wow. Oh, man. It's, it's, it's interesting stuff, man. The stuff people's minds come up with when they're being creative is fascinating mm-hmm. to me. I, I, I don't care. I don't give a damn. Uh, no. You know, I, I, it was also my clothing, too. I guess I don't care. Yeah, it's all it's it's you know it's always how the internet functions you know they'll they're vicious they're they like insults I I just take it most mm-hmm. as like light like lighthearted that type of stuff on the internet sometimes it's hard though because many yeah. people don't mean it lighthearted and I think no. um it, 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 the, the the best way for me to find out if I should take someone seriously when it comes to those interactions if I just give them a quick reply and be as nice as physically possible and just see how they respond because if they just if they're just like kill yourself like okay this is a, this is a very angry person I take most of it as yeah. lighthearted yeah maybe um they say it's jokes mm-hmm. maybe um but jokes come from somewhere. Comedy does not exist in a vacuum. It comes from somewhere. And it may come from an iota of truth, or it may come from something that has nothing to do with the joke, but can be related or made to be related through a series of uh, assertions. But in some cases, jokes come from somewhere. I am bald. That is true. That came from somewhere. That is is true. Uh, uh, I I am bald. Uh, and uh, I guess that makes me look older or whatever. I, I don't care. Um, but it, they come from somewhere. So, uh, but it's, what the problem is, and this is not just me. This is a problem. This is a serious problem. Because I saw uh-huh. you, you comment on it as well. You commented on the thread. And you were like, guys, the personal insults are not, are not okay. But this is what, and, and Dylan, I hope that we can agree on this. Uh-huh. This seems to be what a, lot, what a lot of black conservatives get for having red living views. On average, we get called grifters. We get we get called Uncle Toms. We get called, you know, I don't want to say the other words. Of course, with the c word, we get mm-hmm. called a lot of different things, all because we happen to have views that are not that don't line up with what and the orthodoxy. I mean, over ninety percent of African Americans in America vote Democrat. Over ninety percent. That's just has kind of, has kind of been it's consistent for a very long while. Um, and so if you operate outside of that premise, you're seen as all kind of derogatory things, and that's a problem. It's a mm-hmm. problem because the people who see you that way aren't tapping into their innate human capability to reason, and that is limiting their possibilities. It is limiting their ability to understand things. Um, I mean, Roland Martin was just on MSNBC. And this will probably lead, uh, like be a good segue into our conversation about the speech. He was on MSNBC, and he said that people who supported Donald Trump, people who are MAGA, are evil people, and they are enemies of the republic, and they need to be stopped. Uh, and these people, we need, we need to go to war against these people. This is Roland Martin. I, I grew up listening to Roland Martin. He is very popular in the African-American community, if you wouldn't even call it that. And this is someone calling half of the country evil people that need to be stopped. Mm-hmm. You know, at some point, you just have to ask yourself, are you willing to go outside your little bubble and actually listen to what these people have to say, listen to what your opponent has to say? You know, that's why I come on shows like this. I don't want to be in an echo chamber. Mm-hmm. I'm right leaning, but I also want to understand what progressives are saying. Yeah, so I think that everyone has something important to say. So I, I, first off, I'd like to say, of course, I, would, I, I think anybody um, making any type of race-based insult I'm I'm largely against. I can't really think of many scenarios where I would be okay with it, despite what uh, somebody's political views might be. Um, I, mm. I would say that I think uh, that depending on who you are and what your beliefs are, it's going to depend on the type of insults you get when it comes to uh, the internet. Uh, you being black and being a conservative does mean that there's going to be people who are going to go after um, that. They're going to think that you're like, quote unquote, mm-hmm. a sellout or something like that. Um, I've also seen a lot of black Democrats be co- told they're on the Democratic plantation and yes. that they're, you know, oh, you're just you're just taking welfare in order to like you, that type of really derogatory stuff to, directed towards them. This idea of, oh, they're just sheep, you know, just just doing it because their grandfather did it. They didn't put any thought into it, uh, even though That's a lot wrong, of them. A lot, yeah, yeah. A lot of people I've met, uh, some of the most passionate, uh, devoted, and I would say ideologically consistent people I know are Black Democrats um, from where I grew up, Prince George's sure. County, which has a very, very strong Black Democratic presence and a yep. Black Church presence, which is very politically involved mm-hmm. as well. 
And um, I would say uh, on the internet, if you disagree with somebody's politics, you're going to be unbelievably more likely to be vicious with them. Um, as as somebody who's uh, queer and politically involved, the last mm -hmm. year I've seen a real escalation in the type of rhetoric directed towards um, this particularly queer left leaning people, but just queer people generally of this idea like that old uh, idea of like the queer pedophile coming for your children. I remember in the 1960s mm -hmm. and 70s, there were these PSAs made with police departments that said, beware the homosexual. And it would yes, be that was actually, yep. And, and yep. That it, feel, it felt almost like a, a renewal of that. But under this idea, they're, they're kind of come after your kids. And this started in yep. Russia and Hungary and was eventually like imported into the United States. A lot of that rhetoric of the idea of these um you know they're coming for your kids in the school type stuff which always made which is making me feel very uncomfortable and i've seen that the amount of rhetoric around that escalate online and i oh, think yeah. generally when it comes to like personal identifying characteristics i think it should largely be left out of political discourse like um the so, uh, yeah. the, the right. idea of like when you insult people now if somebody wanted to pull upon their personal experience and identity when like talking about their politics for example someone saying i'm ukrainian therefore the invasion of Ukraine matters a lot to me because da, 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 mm -hmm. obviously I feel like that that's fine, but I don't think people should use that as an attack. That's happening over here where a lot of people call Ukrainians, um, the insult is like Kohol, which is like a slur for Ukrainians. And I'm seeing that rhetoric escalate in, in English speaking oh. spaces where they're learning slurs for countries that no American ever knew these slurs for and are not throwing it at them because they're angry about their gas prices, but it's not this random Ukrainian's fault. Yeah, I, so, you know, on the point, so the few things you mentioned are quite interesting. Um, so, and this is why I oftentimes, the reason you point out is why I oftentimes avoid identity politics. Um, and by the way, I'm sure people know this, there are also leftist critiques of identity politics as well. Um, back in the 90s, um, tokenism was a very popular critique that a lot of leftist academics would use to um, describe black people being represented in a way that is more superficial than anything else. So uh, identity politics, unlike what a lot of people believe, is not merely a left-wing phenomenon. Um, it is a phenomenon that transcends political boundaries. Having said that, I think there is a strain of, uh, of people on both sides, but especially on the left, that do use identity politics as a means of measuring the value of certain political propositions. Um, whether that be affirmative action, whether that be representation in general, whether that be any of these things. Now, that alone shouldn't be enough to reject those propositions. We should examine those issues independent of how its supporters may present it. Uh, but having said that, I think that it's a problem because the proposition, in my opinion, is a little bit more important than the fact that there are people who might support it or who might be impacted by it who have a certain race. Um, that should be secondary, in my opinion. Is it good or is it bad in general? If it's bad, then it's bad for people of all races, and it shouldn't be accepted. Um, so, you know, I don't mention the fact that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, people can see that I'm black, but, you know, I'm also, I myself am also gay. I don't mention that fact. There's no reason for me to mention that fact. Um, mm -hmm. and, and when people find out about that, um, and most of the time, it's almost always people who are a political opponents of mine. They use that to assault me. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't care. Other times that they will use it to assault me. And I do see a lot of that happening right now. Um, I see some of it happening on the right. Um, but I think just to defend the people on the right who use the term groomer, which I think is a bad term to use because it's a, it's a, that's a very specific activity that, that, that denotes a certain process that in a lot of cases is not actually happening in schools. Um, I think that people are worried about their kids being exposed to certain concepts that are not age appropriate. And because they're worried about that, they are then, some of them are going to a very extreme place and saying, okay, if you mention anything about gay folks, you're a groomer, which is not the case. But teaching kids about LGBTQ, I don't know, history or whatever in kindergarten seems a little bit out of place to me. Um, I don't think that's an appropriate setting because the kids in that context oftentimes don't understand the underlying political significance of that. Um, and plus, parents are stewards of their children. 
And ultimately, whether the parent is parenting in a way that people agree with or disagree with, if it's not, if they're not being abusive, their wishes for their kids should be respected as virtue of their duty. So if a kid, a parent does not want to expose their kids to gay people, that's a bad, that's a, in my opinion, that's not really wise. They'll learn about them anyway, but you can't put that in the education system and expect them to be okay with it. And you can't also say, well, you're being a bigot because you, I don't want my kids, you don't want your kid exposed to that. What if their kid is 15 mm-hmm. and they're having that same argument as opposed to if their kid is four, there's a big difference there. If they're 15, they probably already understand the concept. If they're four, they shouldn't even understand anything in that regard. You know what I'm saying? So that's where my problem comes in with that. So um, this is this is much different than what we, I thought we were going to talk about, but I'm, I'm happy to have this conversation for a second. Um, well, if you want to, we can go to different yeah. things. Yeah, so, so I would okay. say first... Um, I don't think going after somebody's identity when it comes to attacking their political beliefs is all productive. I don't think it like is necessarily making a point that's going to like convince anyone. Uh, but I do. I, I would ask you that. Do you understand that if somebody be- uh, believes you're acting against your own self-interests by uh, pushing a set of political beliefs um, against what is your personal identity? Um, uh, in, in their mind, they think that those political beliefs you hold against a certain identity. Do you not see how some people could like point to that and say you're acting ridiculous by doing that? Now, this is obviously an extreme example, but one of the most obvious histor- historical examples would be uh, Mr. Ernst Rome. This was somebody who deeply believed that he could separate his personal private life right, from his political life, and then he was eventually killed uh, because he couldn't. Um, and personally... Um, would I insult him as stupid for doing something like that? Probably, yeah. I, I do think what he did was unbelievably stupid. And so my question to you is, what if somebody was to make that argument about a set of political beliefs that you had or a party that you supported or politicians that you voted for that you ended up voting for people who were against your self-interests and your identity, which well, you claim to have? I yeah. Well, I know you have. I well, don't well, mean you claim it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't vote. That's one thing. And I think that pe- more people should not vote. I think that uh, I think that if people refuse to buy into the system more and more, I think that we would see a very different political situation in this country. Uh, now, obviously, that's not going. That's a very utopian ideal. It's not probably not going to happen. But I wish that we would withhold our votes more and more. That's a different thing. That's a, that's a different topic. Um, but I get your your broader point. Um, I I would say to people who think that I am going against my self interest that their value calculus is in the wrong place. I don't give a lot of value to the fact that I happen to like men. That's just something that I was born with. I happen to like men. Um, that is that my entire worldview does not revolve around that. My, my worldview revolves around first principles, things that are external to me. Um, and, and this is really the spirit that America was birthed out of. Our founders didn't make temporal, um, subjectivist um, uh, you know, arguments as to why America should exist. They said, according to the principles of justice that we can observe in nature, what the king is doing to us is wrong. And that's a much more compelling argument than saying, I just don't want to pay my taxes. It's a much more compelling argument because it can translate from generation to generation. Now, obviously, there were problems with the American um, revolution, and there were problems with the establishment of the Constitution. It didn't apply to everybody. There were many flaws and faults. That is secondary to the broader point. The broader point is, I think first principles and higher values is where people should base their, um, their self-interest in, as opposed to paying so much attention to their identity. People who do that, I, they are in the collectivist vein. A person who would tell, say to me, Christian, because you are gay, I want to outlaw you or I want to be, um, restrict your ability to get married or whatever, those are collectivists. And they exist on both sides of the aisle. And I fight them as fiercely as I can with my words and with other kinds of action. I don't vote. Um, because I don't think that voting really is conducive to fighting those kinds of people, <laughs> but I mm-hmm. fight them as much as I can, and the idea is wrong. And so I fight them not because they're going against, just because they're going against me as a gay person, because they are insulting my individuality by assessing me on the basis of my, um, a, a characteristic I can't control. The same reason I fight against racists. So no, I don't put my self-interest in my sexuality. I put it in first principles, and if people violate those principles or try to go against them, I fight them. So, uh, do you know anything about? I know this is this is a little niche. Do you know anything about queer anarchism? 
It's a, it's a specific strain of anarchism. Yeah, I, I, I've read a little bit about it. I'm not all that familiar. I've read a little, little about it, yeah. So I, I'll avoid the majority of the conversation, but I was reading about it recently, and it really struck my interest because in it, it said that liberty is the inherent ally of the homosexual was like something that a queer anarchist like author wrote and that for a hundred for the last hundred 200 years however long anarchism has been going on there's been a very strong queer presence in anarchism and you can still see that today if you see somebody with anarchist in their like um name on twitter on average there, there's a decent chance uh, higher than if you were to look at any other political ideology i would say they're more likely to be queer and I think the reason for this is because to be queer for the last 100 to 200 years, and really for most of human history, at least in the Western world, which we're placed in, um, is to be sinful. It is to be uh, immoral, degenerate. It is wrong. It is something that's not even entertained. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, people were locked up like Oscar Wilde. And yeah. during that time, a lot of queer anarchist authors talked out against it. And it's because they knew that in the society where one could look out for their own self-interests, right? And they could manage their own like personal lives more freely. And they know it's not a business of somebody else, but they did on their own, that there would be a better life for queers. But the thing is, they also had to organize together in order to obtain liberty because liberty was good for them as queers. If they weren't queers, there could have been a million other reasons they could have disregarded like this this idea of liberty like i'm oh i'm not a fan of liberty because i like the king or I like this or I like that but that queerness became liberty became like a resource for their queerness it became a def a natural defense for their queerness but that was based off upon their identity and they had to organize together to benefit that for themselves and so for me when i think of like being a queer and oh well that's being part of a collective if i if i vote in favor of queer interests i see it as looking out for my own defenses the same way that i think those queer anarchists by being specifically queer anarchists were thinking that this anarchism is my natural defense for me preserving civil liberties freedom of speech my right to marry another man if i want to these are like natural defenses these are these are things i'm doing on a collective that i think it's important to defend myself and have allies who can help me defend myself and others so i do think you can like maneuver as a collective to some degree when it comes to political activism for good reasons based on your sexuality you can but i think that might color your perception of politics in a manner that isn't that that isn't correct um so i think that it's possible to defend what you're talking about is your personal rights without rooting that in a collectivist identity. Um, it's possible to do that because as an individual, for, forget any of your characteristics, as an individual, you are, you have certain rights that are inherent to who you are as a human being. And one of those rights is your right to associate and your right to associate would involve marriage. So forget you being queer, Dylan, by virtue of you being a human being, that is inviolable. That is a much more powerful statement to me than saying, well, as a gay man, I want to go ahead and get married and I want to buck the orthodoxy that has oppressed people like me for a very long time, so I will then favor liberty. Well, your favor of liberty is conditional, but liberty is a precondition of you even being alive. Liberty is a condition of who you are as a human being. So how I think of liberty, I don't think of it as something that is convenient for you to achieve your own ends. I think of it as a quality of human beings that is as integral to our existence as breathing. And therefore, regardless of who you are, regardless of what your identity is, liberty, you, you have liberty and no one has the right to take it away from you. So I understand different people have different ideas of what liberty is. A lot of people who are organizing more groups and are more on the left side of things, such as left anarchist, they may believe that rights are things that, that enable you that are given to you that enable you to live a good life. So healthcare, running for, uh, food, clean water, those are the rights for those kind of, I disagree with that conception of rights entirely, but for those kind of people who believe that, that's what rights are. And so they may say, okay, if rights are conditional on the basis of them being given to me, liberty is also conditional. That's why, I, that's what I mean when I say a kind of idea of politics is incorrect. Because I don't believe that rights are conditional. I don't believe that liberty is conditional. I believe that these things are resolute and universal. 
So that's why I am more focused on the individual than I am collective organizing, even though collective organizing as a matter of uh, praxis can be a good tool to beat back rights violations. So there are many different ways of getting to the same place, but I'd rather people get to the same pra- place with a certain premise as opposed to other premises that may lead them, lead them to wrong places down the line over time. Okay. I, we could go back and forth on this probably for a while, uh, but I do want to make sure we get to the main topic because I have a bunch of other stuff we need sure. to talk about today. The queen died and everything. Uh, um, yeah, sure, sure. So you produced a video on, on Joe Biden's speech and I produced a video on Joe Biden's speech. I am positive we have completely polar opposite opinions of that speech. I think it was his best speech as president. Um, I think I would like to see more speeches like that in the future. And uh, I would have gone slightly harder, uh, which is probably uh, different oh. than what your perception is. How much harder would he have gone? What would you have added? I think that he gave an exception when it came to Republican extremism. Um, like he did on the campaign trail with Larry Hogan, for example. Larry Hogan is like, oh, these are these are people you can work with. And a lot of the Democrats in the audience there, when he gave that exception, were kind of like, eh because Maryland Democrats have lived under Larry Hogan as he undercut school funding efforts with the comments he made during uh, police brutality cases in the state of Maryland, um, uh, different, certain free speech violations that he did when it came to the BDS movement and restricting funding to certain organizations. Um, and so when he says these people weren't extreme and the MAG movement is extreme, I think it's allowed the spectrum to be moved. So Mitt Romney is not actually in, in the proposals he, he made about social security and other issues. Those aren't extreme anymore. Now we've kind of moved it, uh, moved the spectrum to say, well, Trump is the, the extreme to, to me, Trump is just the, the complete fringe of the Republican party. Like you can't, you can't almost go further um, than Trump. There's very few people. Steve Bannon would probably be somebody I would, I would point to that might be to the right of Trump. And so I, I probably would have, said like the MAGA movement is incompatible with democracy, even if the Republican Party before was just extreme, his movement is incompatible with democracy. That would have been the differentiation I would have made, but I also know he's the president, so he might, you know, want to be a little bit more of a uniter than I would be in that instance. Over 76% of Republicans, last I checked, support Donald Trump. And I only went, only went higher after that raid on his Mar-a-Lago compound. So I'm not sure if he's fringe in the party. Maybe, maybe in the spectrum of American I, politics, he might be considered fringe. But, but I don't, I don't really, I don't like those. So there are these these words, extremism, fringe. They don't really tell me anything substantial about that person's position. Okay. But they just tell me the they just tell me the attitudes of society towards those kind of positions. And I don't really care about what society thinks. Okay. Can I can I, I tell you can I tell you some reasons why I think Donald Trump's sure. movement was sure. extreme? Um, I think it's sure. views on religion are extreme uh not only when it comes to things you know like abortion or things like that but when it comes to other religions for example donald trump on the campaign trail was very you know famous famously said i want a total and complete shutdown of muslims entering the united states until we figure out what the hell is going on as in a shutdown of muslims then he went to rudy giuliani after as admitted by rudy and asked him how do we do a muslim ban legally which rudy giuliani admitted on Fox in France. Well, he didn't. He didn't admit it. He said it. it. An admission makes it sound like he was like interrogated about it. He just openly said it. And so that was just like one example that I think would show Donald Trump to be somebody that's extreme. Because when it comes to the United States, you know, banning people specifically for their religion is you know unconstitutional. Um, yeah. It works against our framework. And I would also say insanely bigoted. Yeah, never happened though. It didn't what happen. Was several countries that had Muslim Muslim majority um, populations were, were shut down, which was eventually revoked by a judge. But there were several other countries that had more bigger populations that were let free. Countries yeah. like Sudan, obviously, were on the list. No. And mm-hmm. why? Well, I don't really agree. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't agree with 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 the ban entirely. I I do think that there are countries in Europe that have paid a price for not asking serious questions about the compatibility of certain culture with their own do- with dominant culture. They've embraced multiculturalism over cultural pluralism. I think that America is a 
melting pot of, of different cultures from around the world. That's a great thing. And, you know, as a libertarian, I very much support more immigration. Having said that, I also understand that there are certain cultures that do not conform with the broader American ideas of natural law, individual liberty, self-governance, self-reliance. There are other cultures that throw gays off of roofs. There are other cultures that subjugate women's rights. There are other cultures that don't care about the individual beyond their allegiance to their, um, their deity. There are other cultures that do this. And that is a serious thing to discuss. Um, it's not bigoted. It's not mm-hmm. um, evil to do that. Um, because it would be bigoted if you said that all Muslims are like that. Well, no, actually, Muslims that, are, that live in Western countries, on average, tend to be much more liberal in their beliefs than a Muslim in Saudi Arabia, which is a great thing. That serves the liberalizing effect of rep. But still, in some countries, like Britain, there are problems. There are, there, are pro- there are serious problems. There are entire cities and blocks of cities that are ran by uh, people who are enacting Sharia law in an illegitimate way. And the government in the United Kingdom knows about this, and nothing is being done. Nothing's being done. And so there's not a problem with asking are some cultures not compatible with the broader dominant culture? And if that's the case, what should a country do? You can go Marine Le Pen's route and be bigoted about it and say, we ought to get rid of this entirely, which is not my position. Or you can take the sort of uh, liberal tolerance, classic liberal idea of tolerance, and ask yourself, if this idea were to get bigger, 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 and more culturally influential, what would be the impacts on the broader system? Okay, so... I would first say that to you, individualism is super important, right? And no, as, not, not, not just well, to me. To you, it, well, well, okay, well, I'm saying to your framework, to you and many other people, but to you especially, as, as far as I know from my conversation with you, individualism is so, so, so important, right? The idea that we judge people on their personal characteristics and we don't say you're part of that group, so you're there, you're part of that group, so you're there. That's the reason why you're against identity politics. That's the reason why against things like segregation. That's the reason why you want everybody mm-hmm. to be able to meet the, the totality of their own ends on their own merit and, and be left uh, uh, you know, alone by like government intervention in their, in their personal affairs like marriage and, and relationships and what they do in their personal lives and how they manage their family, right? The, from my conversation with you, this is something that I would say is c- close enough to your worldview, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So big part of it. To me, hearing this, st- if, if I was looking from that viewpoint and I agree with you on many of those things and I heard the words, I want a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. That would give me immediate, yeah, immediate, yeah, immediate and severe pause. Now, you said it never happened. That is true. But we, uh, like I mentioned before, he did go to Rudy Giuliani and asked him, what's the legal way to do this? Because there's no legal way to do that because of our checks and balances in the United States. Mm-hmm. Thank goodness. Mm-hmm. But anybody in a position of power, definitely one of such prestige and power, like the president of the United States, should not even be entertaining such ideas should not be proposing them on the campaign trail and should not be normalizing the whittling down of our civil liberties and that's what's extreme you can be an extremist and fail there have been many people who have plotted revolutions and 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 grand reforms of a system that are dangerous and failed miserably and i would say this is just one of those instances where he did try the courts rejected it one a revised version which he which rudy giuliani did try to do legally and eventually they got something through through. but that was we just got lucky and even that version as far as i know didn't help too much with with what he was trying to accomplish in my sure. opinion but like for me yeah. doesn't that like set off alarm bells like this is not somebody who i should we should trust with the highest office of the land and might be what joe biden was referencing in his speech um well if that was the only thing he was referencing then i would i would have taken it more seriously um, but that wasn't what particularly what he was referencing. What he was referencing mostly was the election, which is a different story, which we can talk about in a second if you want to. Okay. Um, but I, 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 I think that it's one thing to say what he did was extreme. That is, again, that doesn't really tell me about the value or the lack of value of what he did. And the problem I have when people use that word is that they are substituting um, cultural sensibilities for the merits of a proposition. So I don't mm-hmm. think that word even belongs in the political lexicon. I wish that no one would use it. Now. What I was trying to get at earlier, I wasn't trying to endorse his policies. I was trying to say that there is a reason he made that comment, 
And that reason wasn't necessarily based in racism. That reason was based in very legitimate cultural differences that some Muslim majority countries have with the West. This is not a right wing talking point. Someone like Sam Harris has even been out there making this point. And we know what Sam Harris recently just said. He said that Hunter, Hunter Biden could have had corpses of children in his basement and he would still support Biden's presidency. Um, so this is not a left wing person. There are some serious cultural differences that Islam in, in Muslim majority countries, particularly not in Western countries, but Muslim majority countries has with the West. And a lot of these differences go against the values that a lot of Western countries have. And that's something you have to deal with. You can't just ignore that and say, we're just going to be loving and tolerant. A society that tolerates everything will end up being dissolved and destroyed. We have to set limits to certain to to toleration of certain ideas. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't mean the government does it. That means that we as a society, we as individuals in the society, have to say, okay, this is an idea right here that we're not going to entertain. I'm not, I'm not trying to be difficult or rude or anything, Dylan. I'm mm-hmm. just saying this is a very real problem. This is a real problem. That well, has I, to be I, I didn't accuse you of being rude or difficult. Um, but well, I, I was just, uh, your, your, your expressions. <laughs> Well, I'm pretty exasperated. <laughs> I, I ponder as a streamer. As a streamer, I naturally give over the top react and reactions to the slightest of comments. You can ask to go to the bathroom, I'd fall out of my chair. Um, I guess, like, to me, it's just it almost, and do correct me, um, because I'm sure you will for this, but it almost feels a little bit like collectivist thinking to some degree. Because um, from, from Trump's viewpoint, if we're going from Trump's viewpoint, which is the idea of like, look at this massive issue with Islam, where all like a lot of these Muslims, and he he said this almost verbatim before. I forget the exact words, but like they hate us, they they wanted you know they they're they're not happy with us, they hate America. Look at them burning their flags on TV, you know that those types of comments. Now, there's Islam is is very diverse. There's Sufi Islam, sure. there's Sunni Islam, there's Shia Islam, yes. there's Islam of so many different stripes and many different political beliefs. And so for you to call for something like a Muslim ban, even if you were to, even let's say I was to just completely forego any debate about this um, this so-called Shia uh, enforced Sharia UK communities, which I don't know if I buy that, if I'm going to be completely honest. If you have I'll a source on it, it, it exists. Please yeah, do, it, it because exists. it's hard for me to uh, to imagine that a mini Sharia state exists in the United Kingdom. Not a mini Sharia state. Different localities are dominated by by people who are enacting their version of Sharia law. It's it's a thing. I would in like the UK. It's, it's happening. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see it um, because uh, I, I just I, it, it's, it's a big claim, and I would like to see evidence for that claim. Yeah. Um, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, and I would, and I'll ask my chat if any of them have a source as well. Um, but this is a extremely d- so, I, right so I would say is don't you think that Trump's being a collectivist? Don't you think Trump is using collectivist thinking by trying to like like ban all that? And you're saying like, well, I want principles outside of it's bigoted or it's extreme. Okay, it's collectivist. It is bigoted, and it's wrong to ban people because of their religious beliefs, which can range from extremely moderate to sometimes extreme, but. Islam is extremely diverse, and I do not think that being Muslim is certainly an acceptable thing to ban somebody from entering the United States from, because we have so many Muslims in this country who are productive, lovely members of society. Yeah, were they born here or were they born somewhere else? A lot of them were born in the West. Well, Western Muslims. Wait, Western okay, Muslims a lot of more, them. No, a lot Western, of them are born foreign and are still lovely. West? No, sure, sure. I'm saying. On average, Western Muslims tend to have more liberal attitudes than Muslims in countries like Saudi Arabia and Morocco and things like that. That's a fact. That's a fact. Um, so, and that's a good thing, which kind of shows, again, that Muslims, Islam, does have a place in Western society. I don't think that it doesn't. What I was trying to say is, I don't support the Muslim ban, but some of the reasoning behind it, if you actually look, go, go beyond Trump's rhetoric, Go beyond the blanket assertion, and you actually look at the problem in question of cultural compatibility. There is a discussion to be had, and Let I me, think that's what a lot of people just glossed over. So, to me, I understand that there's like a there's always a there's discussion. Not, there's a, there's a discussion always to be had about integration in the society and how to make sure that you're interacting with your neighbors and you integrate well with the neighborhood assimilation. Like all these like questions, all these questions are are, are good, but it it feels like. 
Trump said something inherently really fucked up, and now we're trying to connect it with a valid discussion when this comment really had no validity at all. For example, let's say I, I came out and I said, in, in order to stop, th to stop all these, these drugs, I'm going to arrest any black person on site. And then, obviously, Christian, standing in the audience as a patriotic American, you stand up and you say, Dylan Patrick Burns, you hooligan. This is uh, collectivist behavior. It's wrong. It's racist. It's against the foundations of our republic. And then you have the, the, the founding fathers, like, raised from the dead to applaud you, right? Obviously, you'd be right. That would be fucked. But then I respond, okay, maybe so. But don't you think this is a good connection to a valid discussion about higher levels of, you know, you know, crime and 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 and, and muggings and and so and thing in black oh, and, and and poor black communities and really there is a valid to the, like I feel like we're just trying to find some no, way to try to no wiggle way. a racist and bigoted statement into a discussion about something completely separate that would you know take some responsibility to approach. Yeah, Dylan, that's, I think, a little bit of a false equivalence, because in one case, you were advocating uh, for the detainment of people who are in the country um, and, uh, as, a, as a whole group. In the other case, you're using a process that every country has a right to have dominion over. That is the process of immigration to decide who you let in the country's borders or not. I mm -hmm. mean, so this is a very different case. Now, I understand you're trying to say that both of them are racist. Um, but Islam's not a waste. Well, I didn't, didn't say, say that's, that's not, that's, that's not what I'm doing. I'm not making the assertion okay. that both of them are racist. My assertion. Well, one of them is racist. One of them is racist. Yes. And but so one of them is categorically different from the other. But both of them are collectivist thinking, right? The first idea that everybody. Okay, let's deal with that. But, but I, I, I want to quickly make the comment then. Okay, then we can just alter this and say, okay. Because of these issues I just said about black people, we're banning any more black people from entering America until we can, you know, fix this issue, right? That would still be wrong, even if you were to change it to an immigration issue. Like, yeah, of course, America sure, can legally not... on the world stage say we're not taking any more black people, but that would be wrong, yeah? Yeah, yeah, but that's not even in the same category because race is an immutable characteristic. One, one's religion is not. Um, and again, I'm telling you, I don't support the Muslim ban. I don't never, I don't support that, but I don't think it was racist either. Um, I, here's how I would better phrase your example. Um, as opposed to saying arrest all the black people who do drugs, most of the time, drug prevention organizations that want to go into the communities and help recidivism rates in that category will oftentimes go into black majority communities. And some of them will even go into rural Appalachia, where the opioid rates are high, because that is where statistically Appalachia and a lot of minority communities is where the drug use happens. Appalachia happens to be mostly white. Minority communities happen to be a mix, some Hispanic, some black. To, to not do that and just to go to other neighborhoods where the population that needs your help the most is not, in the name of political correctness, wouldn't serve anyone, wouldn't help anybody. I mean, you, there are some realities we have to confront about use, rates of use and things of that sort, but that doesn't mean we turn that into a political proposition. Not at all. Well, um, well, the, well, I think the, what some people do, Matillon, some people say that drug laws are wrong because they impact black people disproportionately. Some people say that. Some people literally use race for political considerations. They're mostly left, left leaning people, and that's wrong. Drug laws are bad because individuals have a right to put whatever into their body they want to, as long as they're obtaining that thing voluntarily. That's why the drug laws are bad. So the, I believe police should be in communities that have higher rates of crime more often. I mean, duh, right? That's how police function. But the difference between that and the Muslim ban, uh, or the proposed Muslim ban that he did during the campaign trail, is that that was a ban on all Muslims, including Muslims from Japan, Muslims yes. from from completely moderate Muslims who who are not what uh, Trump is is trying to refer to. It could be uh, uh, literally the most libtard of libtard Muslims, right? Uh, I don't support that. I don't if, support yeah, the Muslim. But men. but the thing is, you're you're taking that to say. But I do think the discussion behind this about about assimilation is about is like, okay, yes. But will you agree that referring to Trump? as pushing dangerous ideas around liberty when it comes to this or definitely you know extremist ideas to the american political spectrum like extremist, this is bad 
it, it's not are you, do you agree with the definition that banning like muslims from the term. united states is is an extreme thing to do i don't i don't like the term extreme because it doesn't actually tell me the value of the proposition okay okay That's my problem so well, well you can just say it's a bad we, idea we, we both agree effect. but it can be a bad extremist idea because if something's a bad idea and it's extreme that makes the bad idea worse not really if, yeah. If someone wants to, because then you're you're, you're, normal, that, you're normalizing no. something that used to not be normalized in a society. That's a bad idea. Like if I came out and you're I know just, if I came out and I advocate for a bad idea that's already like a normalized bad idea, that's bad. But what I'm doing when I'm normalizing a bad extremist idea is I'm taking a bad idea that's bad and dragging it into the political mainstream. I'm attempting to. And that's worse because that's adding into the normalization of already like of like bad ideas that are not normalized. Well, um, whether it's a well, I mean, there are a lot of things that have been extreme about American society that you would probably say and, and that were wrongly called bad ideas that were not bad ideas. The idea of gay people being able to teach or maybe being able to marry 50 years ago was considered extreme and bad. Okay. During the AIDS crisis, it was even more stigmatized. Um, over time, uh, a lot of people, a lot of different activists, helped soften uh, those social ideas. And now the idea of being gay is not so extreme in most parts of the country. Of course, um, there, there can be good extreme. Like, I, there can be good ideas that are extreme. Yeah, right, which is which is why I don't think using the term extreme is particularly helpful because I, extreme doesn't really tell me if an idea is bad or good. It just says that it's uncommon. That's it, that's why I don't use the term extreme. That's why it's, I think Biden was the, wrong, the way, is, the dis, is a descripting word, right? It's saying that, like, hey, like, um, these bad ideas and good ideas we interact with all the time, you know, they're bad and good, but these are particularly bad ideas because they're they're extremely bad, right? They're extreme. Extreme extreme does not assign a value judgment. That's where our disagreement is. I think that the word extreme just tells well, you about where societal attitudes are at that time towards that idea. I think and that doesn't mean anything. Due to the tones of his speech, I think you could assume that he was saying these are also bad ideas. I don't think he was just saying they're bad because they're extreme. The whole speech he was talking about, like this disrespect for democracy and then counterproposing his own policies that he's implemented during his administration. I think the whole thing kind of implies that the stuff he's calling extreme, he's calling them bad as well. There are extreme ideas that are good but he i think mm. he was he made it very clear from the tone of his speech that he was that these are bad ideas in his view well tone can be interpreted in many different ways and so i want to kind of just use his words and he called the MAGA republicans not just donald trump but anyone mm -hmm. who supported him who by the way may have had many different reasons for doing so they may not have even liked the muslim ban they may have liked something else um donald trump they call him all extreme and that's a really not only is that a very broad and unquantifiable statement to make it's not a value judgment about their, the quality of their ideas. If you wanted to say, well, I think their ideas are bad in relation to my conception of democracy, blah, 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 fine, make that argument. That's a fine argument to make. I don't agree with it. Make that argument. But leave the ad hominem attacks on it. Well, the leave thing is... The, uh, extremism is a descriptor, but what does it describe? It describes social attitudes, Dylan. It doesn't actually tell you the value of something. Okay. That's why I think Biden was wrong to use that word. He... As far as I know, in the speech, he also like said specifically what he thought was the bad idea when he was talking about a disrespect for democracy, which the MAGA movement has fully embraced in, in state right. elections uh -oh. and, and congressional elections, Senate elections, gum gubernatorial elections, and on you know Donald Trump's own election. Uh, Donald Trump uh, and the movement around him have a complete disregard for uh, American democracy. I 100% I believe that. And that's why I think it was important to say that, because if, if there is a movement that has a complete disregard for democracy, it deserves to be called what it is. It deserves to be called out. And whether that's uncomfortable, you know, it makes people feel uncomfortable or the lighting is bad with the, you know, the red lights or, or it's bad I optics. I, I yeah. have not mentioned the lights. I've not mentioned anything like that. I'm on. I'm interested in the principles and the content okay. of what he said. But I think it was. So I, I think it was important. Lights. I was important. It was important for him to call it out, and that's what I think the speech served uh, to do. Important from what vantage point? A political vantage point? From a political vantage point, it, it, it's it's ginned up his base. A lot of Democrats are excited for the midterms now. Sure, from a political vantage point, it was quite. It was a quite important speech to make because a lot of Democrats were getting angry that Biden wasn't being aggressive enough against MAGA. So politically, definitely was. Now, from a viewpoint of truth and first principles and morals, I think I don't think so. 
Um, and this, again, I'm sure people are going to be accusing me of using word games here, but I'm not. I think that it's very important to actually understand some of this foundational stuff, right? Democracy. I, in my video, I'm sure you watched it. I said, I don't believe America is a democracy. Um, and I think that that term is oftentimes loosely used um, without much consideration for its historical application or for what it actually means definitionally. Um, and I think that any a quick, a quick glance at the writings of our founders and the musings of our founders writ large will show you they didn't really think America was a, a democracy or meant to be a democracy. They believe that we were a republic. If you look at Federalist Number 10, James Madison said democracy can't account for factionalism. And factionalism is essentially when passion meets politics, and that causes chaos and disharmony in a political system. So, But a republic, through a scheme of representation, can account for that and can restrict the passions and can make for a more perfect, better system. And this is an idea that influenced Jefferson and influenced our founding documents. And for Joe Biden to call America foundationally, because he said they're attacking the foundations of our country, call it a democracy. Foundationally, we're not a democracy. Democracy is an abstract idea that doesn't really have a core meaning to it. Uh, throughout history, it's had different applications, and all of them have had one thing in common, is that they believe that if power is given to a majority, just outcomes will ensue. Well, that's not the vision that this, the founders had for this country. It's why the Electoral College exists. It's why the House of Representatives exists. It's why all of those institutions, which are literally meant to be a stopgap measure against the majority, against the will of the people, as Biden said in that speech, that's why all of them exist. Because majoritarian, majoritarian groups don't necessarily convey right principles or bad principles. They are just people that happen to have – if you don't want to hear this, Dylan, I can stop. If you don't want to hear this, I can stop. Everything that I'm saying is rooted in history. It's rooted in the foundation of the country. And Joe Biden doesn't get that. Okay. I can be charitable and say he has a progressive conception of America. William Howard Taft, Theodore Roosevelt, they didn't believe that the Constitution should be Jeffersonian, which is the more position that I take. They believe the Constitution should be updated by fighting for workers' rights, by reducing social inequality, and by having progress as a virtue. That's the viewpoint Joe Biden is speaking from. And I fundamentally disagree with all that. That's okay. where the difference is. So your contention, I guess to me it feels like Donald Trump specifically attacking our system of elections, right, isn't important because we're not even really a democracy. We're not really a democracy. So when people call that out as anti-democratic, like, hold on. that's what it the feels Democrats like. Hold on. The Democrats in 2000, with Al Gore, said the election was rigged. Hillary this said this is times. a whataboutism. No, this said, is nothing no, but whataboutism. You just went, it's you just. About, you no, 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 no. Yes, I'm trying it to get is. you to a broader point here, Dylan. No, it's not. It's no, going to, it's going to no, be hypocrisy. No, it's not. Yeah. No, it's, no, I don't believe, I don't, uh, you know, argument from hypocrisy, to go I don't believe in that stuff. What I'm saying is this. Throughout history, there have been different people on both sides of the aisle that have attacked the election. Clinton and several of the Democratic leaders spent almost the entire past few years saying that Donald Trump was an illegitimate president because of Russian interference, which, by the way, we, we saw didn't even have an impact on him being president. Just because you well, don't know that. a process, just because there's no conclusive evidence. Just yeah, so, because we, you so you can't say if there's no if there's no conclusive whatever. But, okay. but no, the claim was that the Russians definitely interfered and they couldn't prove that. They did. The, they did it, interfere. But but did the interfere? Yes, they 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 use social media or whatever. But the interference have a substantial impact on the vote. That's what Democrats were claiming right after Hillary Clinton lost, and they were saying Donald Trump's an illegitimate president, which obviously is the same kind of thing. It, it that, depends. You know, it depends on which you, Democrat you, you talk to, because there's a lot of Democrats who are just like, "Hey, it's bad with another country," which many of its advisors have talked about sowing chaos in the United States. They, um, tries to do Clinton that, and in fact, our election systems. That is a legitimate but risk. That's a different. But that's but, a different claim. But than but that when, what people. What people will do, I, I, I agree that saying the president is illegitimate is bad, but a lot of times when we talk about this, we'll play these footage of like the Russians interfered in American elections. People will cut it, be like, boom, look at this liar. When that's 100% true that they try to interfere in our election system. When you go into an election okay. system and spread, but for example, we did that in, in Chile where we tried to go down into their election system and spread propaganda sure. using like the sure. CIA. That's bad. That's interfering in sure. another nation's elections. I agree. We agree on that. What I'm saying is, A, the idea that Russia pushed Donald Trump over the win is not at all established whatsoever. 
And that was a theory that Democrats like Hillary Clinton and other very prominent Democrats in the party who were leading the party, not minor Democrats, prominent ones, were using. And some of them even still, Clinton still thinks that Donald Trump was an illegitimate president. So that's a that's the same kind of denialism that the left is critiquing the right for right now. And all I'm saying, here's what I'm saying. Just because you critique a process does not mean you dispute the foundations. It's the truth. Elections are a process. They are a feature of the broader political structure of our republic. They are not the foundations of our republic. And the founders understood this, which is why they instituted the Electoral College to be a buffer against this idea of majoritarian rule and will of the people. So yes, I think that critiquing a process is fine. We have free speech in this country, and you are able to do that. Um, the Constitution can be amended for a reason. There's nothing wrong with that. No. Whether it's so, Democrats okay. doing it in 2000 so or 2016, I, whether if, it's Donald Trump doing it. Okay, but if my critique of the process is, I believe the process should be changed to made me God. Like, obviously... There is a anti-democratic strain to what I just said that I did Donald Trump ever say that Donald Trump would never care if he won or lost an election. He just cares about winning. He didn't say that. I gave you I a comparison. You I gave you a comparison to talk about your your thing was, well, if they're just talking about reforming it, like there's nothing wrong with that. But if your reforms are anti-democratic reforms, then that's wrong. And the problem with Donald Trump is he not- is. His only priority is winning by any means necessary, including manipulating the system, intimidation. And we saw executive orders that were written up that should have never even been entertained by the White House. We saw them try. We saw the Trump team try to pick up fake electors. We saw the call to Georgia. He doesn't care about good reserving democracy or promoting democracy reforms. He wants to just make sure that the system serves him winning, not the person who necessarily won the most votes or won the electoral college or won anything that any system of democracy would point to and say, that's how democracy works. He's critical of the process. But if the whether pro- it's for self-serving purpose, whether it's for self-serving purpose or not, doesn't really matter. He's so if I, so if I came, okay, so my critique of the process is that the last election did not make me God. You're is, being is that is that it, but yeah i am being hyperbolic. being hyperbolic i'm being hyperbolic but it's to a point it's to a point that your critiques of the process can be inherently anti-democratic his critiques of the process were inherently democracy so therefore his critiques of the process if it's just meant to serve him holding power onto power as long as possible like we can't call that anti-democratic or a threat to if, america we can't do if, that if it, no, no. If the process itself has a problem with it, which a lot of people believe it does, um, then there are questions and discussions that can be had. Whether that those are self-serving or not is really immaterial to me. It's like saying if the billionaire who donates to charity is doing so to raise his investment portfolio and make himself look better, does that make his donation any less? I don't care. He's giving to charity. I don't care if he's doing it so he can get more friends at dinner parties or if he's doing it because he actually cares about poor children. So if there's something wrong with the process in general, and someone is saying, hey, let's look into this, why should but, I care if he wants to do that so he can win easily? But the problem is— And the, by the way, I'm not, even sure that's, I mean, I'm not even sure that's what— I'm not even sure that's what he was really trying to that's do. That's not what I think he's that trying Trump to do. I think Trump legitimately feels aggrieved. I think he legitimately feels, feels aggrieved. Now, whether that's rational or not, I don't, I don't know. But I think that he legitimately feels aggrieved. In 2015, during the primary, multiple times he talked about how the primaries were rigged against him uh, and like actually rigged, not as, oh, the establishment doesn't like me, but it's actually the voting process is rigged. Then during the general, he mm-hmm. was talking about how it was rigged against him. Then when it came up to 2020, he said, if he loses, it's rigged. And then after yes, the he election, he loses, he calls it rigged, flails about making tons of bogus claims about the election system while calling the Georgia Secretary of State, telling them to find the votes to make him win. And that if he doesn't find the votes, that's criminal. And I just informed you of your criminal behavior. So, you know, you mm-hmm. better get on this, right? This is this is very clearly, if you listen to this audio, him trying to push yeah. a, a state official to just, you know, make him come on, you know, fudge the numbers a bit to putting him out uh, up on top. These aren't critiques based on the merits. These aren't critiques based upon him wanting to make our system more democratic or better functioning or just things we need to look into. He wants people to look into it because he lost. And that's his only problem with it. 
is that he lost and he's willing to do whatever it takes to make sure he wins. He it's the same person he was in 2015, he is today. And I think that 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 call is one of the most evident examples of it. Not even looking at the fake electors or looking at the executive order written up to seize voting machines with the military or any of that. Just mm-hmm. that call alone is enough for me to say this is not somebody who fundamentally cares about the right the the democratically elected person winning now you don't think america is a democracy but we have a process that is a representative republic that most people would call a representative democracy a form of democracy yeah they'd be wrong they'd be wrong the electoral college is inherently anti-democratic but the thing is you can have a vote in faith you can you know what i agree with you on that maybe we should change that but that doesn't no, that doesn't change that. i like that I like that very much. I don't want the majority deciding, necessarily deciding who my president is. But the thing, but whether or not you think America is a democracy, the the reforms he's making are less democratic. His reform is. I don't think America is a democracy. Why would democracy be a value for me in my my opinion about his reforms? So, okay. So if you don't care about democracy and you don't want a democracy, bad idea. Okay. No. Then if then can I just say oh. Okay, I, a republic is a form of democracy. Well, we're gonna. No, it's to, not. No, yes, it's it, not. It, yes, no, it is. It's not. Yes, it is. Well, in, in we, don't, 10, we don't. We don't. We no, don't. In Federalist Ten, Madison made this very clear. In Federalist Ten, no, okay. it's not. It's his American history. In Federalist Ten, Madison elucidated differences between democracy and republic. Representative right democracy. Federalist uh, number ten. Okay. Well, Dylan Burns, twenty twenty two. I said that it is. Okay. Madison is Good not the guy. You're, Ma- you're not right. Well, Madison isn't the king of man. Okay. Um, Madison is the architect of the political theory behind America's fa- fa- institutions. He okay. influenced Jefferson a lot. The Bill of Rights is basically a lot of Madisonian stuff. Okay, and so America's yeah, not the only. He, you could say that he he said he said a thing, and I don't even know what you're specifically referring to. But there are a million mm-hmm. other people who have de- who have developed uh, democracies around the globe that would call them democracies, as as well as political theorists in Germany, France, and democracies all around the world that would call it democracy. But whether or not this sure, is a democracy is secondhand to whether this is good. Do you think it's, then let me just ask you this question. Do you think it's good to intimidate state officials to make you win an election? Well, in Georgia, and I, I kind of want to add some context here. In Georgia, there was a situation with the drop boxes. Um, Brad Raffensperger drastically extended. Um, why are you doing that? <laughs> uh, anyway, Brad Raffensperger drastically extended and gave Stacey Abrams a lot of materials, um, a lot more drop box locations that were more than necessary for each location. And there are a lot of people who were concerned about that. And that was at the very center of the critique. It's funny because in Florida, in Florida, they've been having mail-in voting for a very long time, and they get their thing done very efficiently, very fast, and that was never in dispute. But in Georgia, there were particular problems that preceded Donald Trump's critique of Raffensperger. Having said that, I wouldn't have made the call. I wouldn't have said the same thing that he said. I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have done that. Do you but think- I, I do know that mm-hmm. there, were, there were valid – even if those reasons, like the expanding the Dropbox locations and sending out all these mail-in ballots to people who didn't even request them – even if all of that does not mean there's fraud, and I personally do not believe the election was stolen. So even though that does not mean there's fraud, there are still serious problems with how the process was under- undertaken, which gives someone like the president, Donald Trump, a legitimate standing. That's the problem. In almost every case that he filed in court, here's an interesting thing, almost every case he filed in court was thrown out on the basis of technicalities, not because the judges actually examined the claims and said, this has merit. This doesn't have merit. It was on the basis of technicalities. Wouldn't, couldn't I make the claim, though, that that's because most of these lawsuits were frivolous and they weren't going to go anywhere anyway? And I, and I, and there's no reason, I have no reason to believe that if any of these were, were tried on their merits, that they would have succeeded. And if, and if it is due do on technical, that? and if it is due on technicalities, then that would purely be the fault of the legal team who didn't know what they were doing and didn't do it properly. Not necessarily. If there are judges that don't think that this, that this, well, first of all, how many yeah, court cases happen. went judges, for? I mean, there was so many. Oh, I don't know, 20, 30, something like that. But yeah, like none a of ridiculous them actually amount. sat down and examined it. None of them actually sat down and examined it. Here's the problem I don't believe the election was stolen, but what I'm saying is this, Dylan. When you have a system 
where there have, are things, like I mentioned with the mail-in ballots in Georgia and drop box locations that are serious concerns to the integrity of an election, and then you have judges who won't even examine the evidence that the other side has presented, how can you blame someone like Donald Trump from saying this something was wrong here? Well, the thing how is, do you he didn't, them? he did not even, the problem is, that's not what happened, though. And the, the problem was, it so wasn't, what happened. no, it isn't what happened, because he didn't call him three weeks after his co case was seen or his case was then seen by a judge and then he's calling him and be like, hey, did you hear about the case update? Da, da, da. That's not what happened. It was the night of the election. Uh, or, or I know what the, the problem with Raffensburg. I wouldn't have done that call. I wouldn't, I wouldn't he, have done that. He, he, the, I before, understand, I understand the, votes, why. the votes weren't even completely counted and he was already exactly. saying, foul game, uh, this was all cheated, this was all fraud, find the votes. Do you know how bad it is to say find the, he's literally just saying, make me the winner. I just, wouldn't, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have said that. But I also understand, having lived in Georgia and having been politically active in Georgia during the 2020 election, I also understand, as I mentioned, that there were several problems that caused people to question the integrity of that election. This is stuff and, that you resolve before, not after an election. I agree. I, I agree with you, which is why the question, which is why Brad Raffensperger mismanaged the entire thing. Well, he has some fault. You know, he has now, some fault. If, and there if, are people. If, if me and you played a dodgeball, Watts, played a game of dodgeball, and we establish all these rules in this big piece of paper, and then I win by those rules, and then you're like, but rules seven, three, and eight are wrong. I don't like those rules, or those rules were bad, or. Like at that point, you already agreed to play by those rules. In many of these states, if, the, it's, yeah, it's yeah. a Republican state led by a Republican a, Secretary of State. They've got a Republican state state Senate. They've got a Republican state delegates. And so for me, it's hard for me to believe that Donald Trump didn't go into this under some assumption of he knew how the Georgia game was playing. He knew how these different state uh state governments and state policymakers that they work with like they had that there was some big egregious problem beforehand that they would have addressed it beforehand they wouldn't have waited until and there after. were people there were a lot of people criticizing brad raffensperger's ability uh, um agreement with stacy abrams to expand the out to drop box locations and also the mail-in votes a lot of people were saying dude don't do this he did it anyway and so when president trump comes off and says hey you know Find the votes. This is, a, this is a problem. You have to understand where that's coming from. It's not coming from, as you said, well, he just wants to be God. No, there were it actually is. legitimate political. I, there, I do there believe were legitimate that political, is. Dylan, there were legitimate political problems that preceded that call. Yeah, because more people got to vote in Georgia. Therefore, he lost because when the more no, people turn out, Democrats no. win. When less people turn out, no. Democrats lose. And so when more people were able to vote in Georgia and the high out was then the turnout was higher. That's why Georgia flipped blue. Some and that was a problem for had, him. No, some areas had more drop boxes than it was proportional to their county. And some areas got massive melon votes like like that melon ballots, you know, to people who didn't even request them. There were plenty of problems, Dylan, Wait, with the Georgia can I ask you, election. Can I ask you a question? If I sent a mail-in ballot to somebody who didn't request it, would that be a valid or invalid reason to overturn what happened in Georgia? I did, it, it's a reason to ask what's going on. It's a reason okay. to ask, you know. But that wasn't my question, election, though. No, I didn't say, I didn't, I never said that I approved of him trying to get the election overturned. What I'm, here's what I'm saying. I'll say it again. What I'm saying is there were serious election integrity questions about what happened in Georgia. I didn't say the election was invalid. I didn't say it was rigged. I said there were serious questions that preceded Donald Trump's call with Raffensperger. And if you want to understand the reason why Donald Trump made that call beyond the narrative that he's some sort of tyrant, you should probably understand those very serious questions. That's all I'm saying. So to me, but you, okay. So if we can avoid this conversation because we're just going to loop and I'm just going to keep saying this, this, how egregious this is. Do you think this is something that the president of the United States should call out. Definitely as Donald Trump, and I believe it is, Donald Trump continues to push the same conspiracy theories on, on Truth Social now, his new social media app, uh, which is having, I think, isn't it having some trouble now? Like legal problems or he can't get on the app store or something? What's it going yeah, I, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think Android or Google Play is trying to ban it or something. I think it had to do with moderation issues, I think. Yeah. Um, because yeah. it kept being people... A lot of civil... seen happen to parlor, excuse me. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Fuck! I lost. What was I saying? Um. 
Do you think that this is something, uh, yeah, do you think that this is something that needs to be called out? Because I think it is. Definitely since Donald Trump is seemingly attaching himself to this message more than ever, with him recently calling for a redo of the election two years mm -hmm. later, or for him to be installed. Look, I, I think that the Republican Party needs to just get rid of, just let go of this election stuff. That's my opinion. So I'm not in agreement with the president on that. I don't agree. But the reason, back, looking this back to Biden's speech, Biden was calling the elections a fundamental part of our political, political our, our foundations or whatever. I told you I don't agree with that. And not only that, but he, but he is using critique of our election processes as a proxy for the destruction of our country. I don't agree with that. And then to wrap it up as a final point, um, as a final point, uh, what was I going to say? What was I really going with this? As a final point, um, there were some legitimate problems that do require um, inquiry that are being blanketly called election denialism, which is also another problem. So when you when, when Biden creates all those errors in his oh yes, and he was also evaluating the sum of MAGA political positions in terms of big abstractions and that election issue, as opposed to looking at the other legitimate issues, uh, legitimate claims that MAGA do have, such as about the size and the extent of the administrative state, which is what a lot of left-wing people have been against that for a very long time, particularly with the FBI and a lot of the, the prison program and the NSA. MAGA is in general against those things. If you look at the candidate just selected in Liz Cheney's spot on the website, she has a section where she wants to get rid of the NSA's prison program and she wants to challenge that kind of authority. There's a lot of different claims and a lot of different reasons why people supported MAGA. Some are political. Some were cultural. There was a, a there was a, a lot of black folk who decided to support Donald Trump in 2020. There were a lot of Hispanic folk who decided to support Donald Trump. Why do you think this happened? There were a bunch of conflicting and very very interests that came into supporting Donald Trump. And for Biden to say that all of this is extreme and all of this is just a threat to our democracy is for Biden to dismiss a very diverse part of the country that may have different reasons for supporting the same person. You can sigh, you can shake your head, Dylan. But I, I, I'm trying to reason. think how much I want to... These are the stats. I, I'm trying to think about how much I want to anger you right now with this comparison in my head. Um, you can, you're not going to anger me. This is fun, actually. People can... Okay, so there's a few things I want to say. Um, the first thing I would, I would say is I do believe the destruction of our election system as, as a fair and transparent system where people can lose and people can win based upon, uh, you know, the system that we've built and not just, hey, I lost, therefore make me the winner, find me the votes. I think that would lead to the destruction of our country. If it became a, became a system where the president can call state officials and be like, just make me win, hang up, and now they're the president for another four years, they can act in an extremely tyrannical way with less I, checks on them. And that is the type of system I think Donald Trump would be perfectly fine with, as I, we can see through his behavior. And that would lead to destruction of what made America a functioning republic. I don't think that phone call was appropriate. As I kept saying, number one, yeah, but also I, number two, okay. there, were there were legitimate reasons that had nothing to do with Trump's supposed desire for tyranny that you believe he has. Of course, I'm going to get to that. that. That's my, that's my that next preceded that call. That's, that's my next okay. Point, but the thing is, there can be legitimate concerns about something, and then you can go too far, or in a, or you can try to weaponize something to try to benefit yourself in a in a very destructive way. Even if you had a legitimate concern, let's say that there's a leaky sink in my building, and someone's like, "Well, mm -hmm. you need to fix this issue," and I'm like, "Great," and then I smash out the wall and use it as an excuse no, to build build doing. an extension. He wanted to destroy. He wanted to destroy the the elected will of the people in Georgia. That is what he wanted to do. If, no. uh, there's, okay, if I if I lost an election the and, I, and he said just find me the votes to win, and he gave them the exact number of votes that, that he needed to find. Was an, that call was inappropriate. I'll keep saying it. Yes. But what I also understand is that there were reasons he made that call that had nothing to do with his desire to stay in power. If He's, the mail-in ballot thing he, hadn't been such a big issue, I promise you that call would have been less likely. Why do you think every single time he lost an election, like during the Republican primary or before he headed into a big election, he would say, 
if I lose, it's rigged. Do you think he's saying that because every single time he had valid reasons to believe that every single primary he was going to get cheated, that every single time it was there was like some thing lurking, some regulation that specifically is going to spite no, Trump? No, no. Two things can this be is true a at once. This two, is two, a two, two, two things can be true. Two things can be true at once, Dylan. He can have, for a lot of the time, been just being a sore loser. And there could be a time when he actually had a legitimate concern. And instead of actually evaluating the conditions around that time, people just look at his history and look at habit and say, you know what? You have a history of doing this. Therefore, you're this. That's not the case. That's, just, no, that's not the case. That, that, that's a sort of argument from past behavior as opposed to an argument on the basis of the merits of the case. But he does this every election. If, if I, uh, I mean, if, if it's, 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 be true at once. Like, but the thing is, we both agree that it's inappropriate. We both know yes. that this is something he does a lot when it comes to these elections, saying it's going to be rigged, and if I lose, it's not it's not the real results, it's the fake results. And then he ends up calling a state politicians, trying to get them to get him enough votes to win, just find the votes, and gives them the exact number of votes. That's the thing that I think clear, most that clearly shows clearly shows his intent, is if he was just like, hey, look, I heard about this, this, and this problem online, I'm just bringing it to your attention, please give it a check out, goodbye. Click, I could in my mind be like, I feel like there might be some other attention here, but it's like, I don't have enough to grab onto. But he gave them the exact number of votes that would be necessary to flip the state from blue to red, showing clearly that his intent was to make him the winner. And that was, that was his motivator. I, as I mentioned, I don't think the call was appropriate. I wouldn't have made the call. But I also understand that even if he had a certain intention of making the call. Call. There were some valid issues in Georgia specifically that Brad Raffensperger was at the head of. And Donald Trump understood that. There were complaints about this before the election. And instead of those issues being addressed, they weren't addressed. And that created a lot of skepticism. This is just the, 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 pro, the, the consequence of when you make a political decision. Now, I'll say this. I think Stacey Abrams... I think that she turned out a lot of young people. I know she did. On my campus when I was in Georgia, there were a lot of Stacey Abrams uh, uh, buses on the campus bringing a lot of people in to register to vote. And she managed to, with the help of Raffensperger, with the express help of the Republican Secretary of State, she managed to win the system. It's not right, but it's legitimate through the process. But that process still brings integrity concerns. That's my position. So... Can I ask you, what do you think of the historical trend that when more people vote, Democrats win, when less people vote, Republicans win? Would you agree with that? Um, is that what the data says? Uh, to my beliefs, yes. I mean, uh, to what I know, yes. I mean, more people of all demographics or more young people? What just happened, just more Georgia people flipped, generally. No, no. What, what, what flipped Georgia was um, 18 to 25 young black women being registered to vote. That's literally what flipped Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what, that's what, younger college age black women being registered to vote. That's what that's what Georgia flipped. Which historically in the in in America, like certain groups of people vote less. Young people are like the most obvious uh, yes. example of people yes. who vote less. So when we get uh, groups of people who don't usually vote in politics, and we start to get them to participate, usually what that means <laughs> is that Democrats end up winning. The only example that I know of of that ever working the other mm -hmm. way would be. The evangelical community when they were heavily uh politicized and got involved in politics and the church got very uh involved in like um pushing out i would say uh political uh activists um mm -hmm. but i would it seems to mm -hmm. be generally the historical trend is when more people vote democrats win when less people vote republicans win that may be an oversimplification when more diff when more kinds of people vote democrats tend to be favored um more, when, particularly when more minorities and more young people vote, Democrats tend to be favored. And that's, that makes sense. So according to Pew Research, Gen Z is more progressive and uh, more um, social justice oriented than their previous generation, so, than, than, than other generations. Um, so that makes sense to me, that if more young people, especially more minority young people, vote, there's going to be um, more Democrat victors. That's, that's the case. Okay. But different demographics obviously pose different conclusions. So... I, I do want to I do want to bring up when you talk about these like these illegitimate uh, these legitimate concerns being brought up by Trump. Um, mm -hmm. 
you can have one or two legitimate concerns going into an election and try to address them or not address them. Once the election starts at that point, like you're working under those systems of rules and balances. And so trying to call anybody to try to like either change what happened or, you know, change the votes you get or anything like that, like you've already just started working under a certain system. You can't kind of like flail and cry about it and whine about it once you start it. I would, if I agreed to box a man, right? And we agree to, in these debates, to have like a certain boxing ring and like a certain glove size and certain brand of glove you can and can't use. These debates are long and arduous, and it's in the contract process. And sometimes somebody will lose and they'll be like, man, the reason I lost was because of this. And that's why I should actually did it. You agreed to those rules. Now you can be angry about that, or maybe you, you th could think you got shafted in negotiation, but going into this, you agreed to those rules. So it, if the rules were bent or manipulated, they should, for a particular end, they shouldn't, there shouldn't be anything wrong with that. I think, I think there can be something wrong with that. Absolutely. But it, it's very, okay. it, there can be something wrong with the rules, but once you start participated with those rules, you can, you can't try to get them to change the outcome. You can maybe say, maybe this should be changed for next time or something like that. Forget the but, call. Forget the call. So I forget already the told call. you I don't, agree with, I don't agree with the call. The call was inappropriate. I wouldn't have made that call. Mm -hmm. Having said that, if you know that putting more Dropbox locations in certain areas and putting out a lot of melon ballots is going to benefit the person who has been advocating for you to do that, that happens to be a progressive activist in George C. C. Abrams. If you know it's going to benefit her, then you're basically... Allowing the rules to be used to the benefit of one party. Wait, you're, you're can you? And abetting that. You can do you're something that's. That. You can do something that's fair or good, and it can still benefit one side more than other sides. Brad Raffensperger acceded to the specific demands that Stacey Abrams had, and that's been one of the biggest criticisms of him in the Republican Party. That okay. He did that. He well, didn't do anything illegal by doing can, that, can, but can I, it can, was it, it gave why, him an unfair advantage. Because why? The, because why are the mail-in ballots bad? Why would why was it why would oh, that be a bad. bad thing? It's not that they're in, in, in themselves are not bad. Florida ha, has has had mail-in ballot votes for a very long time. And there's typically no problem down there. Not that they're bad. It's that in the case of Georgia, they were being used to benefit someone else's a political motive. Stacey Abrams. So, okay. The point is the rules were being bent in a certain direction for someone else. How how is that, sending how is fair? How is so? What you're saying is, when there's more mail-in ballots in, in in Georgia, Democrats do better, or Stacey Abrams? No, people what do I'm better. saying is, Stacey Abrams so wanted problem. to expand. No, what I said is, Stacey Abrams wanted to expand mail-in ballots in Dropbox locations as well, even if they were disproportionate to the amount of people in the actual county um, to expand access. When in all reality, she was doing so to make it easier for her side to win. That's a problem. So Dylan. okay, so if if the idea is Okay, let me just be specific here because so far, like everything that she, she your legend, she did doesn't sound mad to me. Are you saying that she put mail in ballots in one counties, but then tried to exclude other counties from mail in ballots? No, and no, was like, no, 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 no. She negotiated with Raffensperger to expand the number of mail in ballots in counties that didn't really need all those mail in ballots and expand how many, no, expand the number of drop boxes, excuse me, that didn't really need all of that, and also expand the number of mail in ballots. That yeah. clearly benefited her. Raffensperger didn't mind playing by her rules, and that was a cause for concern. It wasn't illegal. He had the right to do that so, as Secretary of State, but do you see how that could be potentially unfair? No, it sounds more fair. How so? Making it easier to vote. Making it easier to vote is a good thing. If you have a county of 1,000 people and you have 20 drop boxes, I'm just giving you a number. How is that making it easier to vote when you could all code like one or two drop boxes? I mean, if it's close to it your house, it's going to be, if it's closer to your house, well, you can just well, walk closer. Like if, like if there's, if all I have to do is go to the end of my street to drop off my vote, it's going to be easier than I have to drive like half a mile away. It, Abrams was literally organizing buses to drive people and the different part was to buy people to the polls. There was no problems. If you really wanted to get to the polls, you could have done so. Wait, if, really if, people in. if they were busing people in and doing all this stuff to get people to vote, why would it be bad if they did this then? Like, like if, because, not, because like, no, dude, in my, in, in my, in my, in my main, if my best system voting is like, I click the button and you're done. Right. 
because then just making it as physically easy and you turn 18 you're immediately giving a voter id you're given everything you need you're immediately signed up all i have to do is to press a button and to vote that would be my best system because it gets the most people participating in our democracy which then i think could be the most representative of our societal needs well, right why does so why would that be a problem why does a county that has a thousand people need three or four job boxes i mean it depends on its geography you know i i mean exactly and that was the problem there are certain counties that have like five hundred thousand people in them they obviously more need more than one drop box let's be reasonable but there are counties that are so rural they don't need that and the problem was raffensperger was adding drop box to a lot of these places now you may say that's more access i say that's superfluous and it gives a particular side that requested that specifically an unfair advantage over the other side well, how does That's it give them an un deal. so by making it easier to vote that it way makes it, it easier for them to do what they want to do it makes them easier for them to fulfill their not to, to vote. vote i mean you you, you act as if it was just an organic effort to just make it easier for people to vote no it was a strategic effort for one party to use the system in a way that is easier for them to manipulate you, when you mean manipulate you mean get more people to vote what i mean get more people no you're pretending as if this is organic. That's the problem. You think this is just organic. People, more people well, I mean, some, the thing vote. is, yeah, adding, more is drop, adding more drop Stacey boxes. Does, needed. Well, let me, let me just Stacey, say, can I just say why I'm having a problem sure. with this? Okay. Yes. Adding more drop boxes or, or adding more mail-in votes does not immediately just transfer into votes. You still need people to Correct. vote in those drop boxes or mail in their vote. And so for me, also, you're saying, yeah. to me, it sounds like that putting out as many opportunities for people to vote through drop boxes and mail-in ballots, like that's bad because no, it helps the I'm Democrats. Is, no, what I'm saying is there are certain areas that don't need as many drop boxes in, as were put in, but those drop boxes were there and Stacey Abrams took advantage of that because she asked for it. That's the problem. It's not that we're getting more people to vote. That's not the problem. How did she take the advantage of it? Is, that was bad. Like how 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 did she take well, advantage she of it? She requested it from Raffensperger, and he and he and he acquiesced to her demands against the, okay. the Republican Party. Oh no! But but how did she use those extra drop boxes to do something? Like what did she do once she had those extra drop boxes? It allowed her to organize more. It allowed. I mean, allowed her to do a lot of things. Allowed, what is, allowed, it made her what political you, strategy easy. How? Like, how does yeah, it make well, it easier? Yeah. If, if the More thing is, people, if, okay, if, if, my, because in my mind, I'm trying to, I'm trying to imagine. Mail-in ballots. Because yeah. mail-in ballots were the dominant mode of voting in many areas of George during the election. Yeah, and because, so, you know, more, COVID. More, more drop boxes and more air, uh, COVID, yeah. More drop boxes, more well, a lot areas. of people, a lot of people died from yeah. COVID. I think that's pretty serious. You're, you're and I right. think that'd be a good reason to have mail-in ballots I more lost, available during I that lost, election. I lost... I lost. I have no problem with mail-in ballots. Florida has been doing that for many years. It's not been a problem. That's not the issue. The problem was the scope of the operation was specifically requested by Stacey Abrams, and she was acquiesced to. And that's why people were upset. Oh, because why because you understand because that? okay, so I get it now. So a Democrat made the recommendation, and it was a good recommendation or whatever recommendation. No. But since it was a Democrat, it was, it was bad. No, <laughs> that's, that's a straw man. That's well, not straw I'm, 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 I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Straw man. But the thing is, it's like this. Man. If okay, okay, as a straw man, I I really just don't get yes. it. So if 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 how do you use an extra mail in ballot in a county? in like a negative bad way to benefit your side like what what's the strategy well some people some people have argued that because that there were a lot of different mail-in ballots in counties that were not proportional to the size of those ballots that the ballots some of them were unsecure and could it be used to do fraudulent votes that is there the has there been evidence made if has there been evidence provided that there was there's a been, substantial there's been, made there's been there's been there's been a lot of claims made um Wait. i don't know their veracity there's been claims made. That's not the point. The point is this. Yeah, but then well, okay, election, people can whine any election. election in, no, no. Election integrity is not about um, being able to prove every incidence of, uh, of, of bad activity. Election integrity is about making sure people have confidence in the security, the integrity of an election system. And if there are more opportunities for people to cheat... I don't care if they actually cheat or not. That's going to undermine confidence. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Don't you understand that? I understand yes. that. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. So it's important to inspire confidence in our election system. Well, that's what election integrity is about. 
Okay. And that's so. And, would you and, say? Would you say? I know where you're going with this, though. Yeah. Would you say, you say Donald Trump did not do that? Yeah. That's different, different case, though. Different case. Different case. But it, but so but do you, but he's attacking no, or, or he he is making people believe that our system is inherently the, rigged, the, like daily. The structure of our the structure. Okay, there's a difference between between someone who happens to be someone who happens to be involved in our system in an ancillary way and the structure of our system. If the structure of our system, which includes the mail in but the mail in drop boxes, if that is compromised or that is that seems to not be entirely good to some people and it undermines confidence, that's different than Donald Trump saying this was rigged or whatever. Let me ask you a question. Way, Republicans still vote. Republicans so, still vote. They still vote. For, for a while me, they didn't, but they still vote. I want as many people to vote as possible. And I assume you do too, right? And for me, if there's something we can do to make that easier, but it doesn't f like really undermine our security, it doesn't lead to like thousands of more like fraudulent ballots, right? It doesn't really lead to many problems. I would be in favor of, of uh, adjustments to our election system to make it easier for people to vote. I think that we, you know, people, I, you know, we have a Protestant work ethic in a lot of this country. You know, we mm -hmm. work nine to five, a lot of times on election day, mm -hmm. you've still got to work and making it easier for people to submit mail and ballot stuff like that. I'm in favor of that. And so for me, I mean, that's, I, what, that's what the Republicans and so, for, so for me, right, looking at um, these, these claims for election security, unless there is evidence provided that these things fundamentally under like undermined election security in Georgia and it led to all these fraudulent ballots or, you know, there's oh, look so much fraud that an election could have been overturned. Then I'm like, OK, then this is something we should like change and, and make sure to like fix because it's terrible. But that didn't happen. And so, so and, and, and again, like the election wasn't even over yet yeah. when the call was made. But again, separate so, issue. So yeah. I, the call I told you, I don't agree with that call, but. So you're saying we have to actually have a security breach before we patch up security risks. That's not how it, that's not how things work. Well, the thing is, get rid is of the security it, risk before the breach happens. Okay. But I guess my, my statement would be is like, I don't think that there's legitimate security risk to a lot of the reforms that the Democrats are making. And I don't think there's a security risk. I didn't risk. say a lot of the reforms. I said in Georgia. I don't think there was a security risk there either. Un, there was anything ever. Was there anything ever substantiated? I don't know that to be true, but what I'm saying is the risk was there, and the risk is what gives way to the perception that there was unfairness. That's what I'm saying. There's always there's always not. risk for fraud in every risk, single ways, election. There are ways to mitigate risk, though. Okay. And having 20 drop boxes in one county that's not even proportional to the population does not seem like a way to mitigate risk to me. Okay, but but there that's was but there was no evidence of large scale fraud in Florida. That's not what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, but what, I, what, but I'm what, saying. I'm, what I'm saying. The problem is. Let me, I, understand, I understand. You want to put the regulations in place before the bad fraud happens. And you want to make sure that people, when they look at their election system, they're like, I know that my vote counts, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So mm -hmm. what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is there was no evidence of fraud that we don't really you you know we can claim that there's like risk factors here but we don't really see those risk factors playing out in any significant way we didn't see them play out in 2020 um and i have no reason to believe due to trump's past comments or how the maga movement has dealt with the 2020 election that a lot of this has to do with specifically trying to fix the system necessarily when it feel a lot of it just feels like a, a, a non-acceptance of trump losing these are all separate claims. These are all these are all separate claims that I don't think really tie into the point that I was making. Trump's desire to be president again and the Dropbox situation in Georgia, they may connect in some places, but generally they're categorically different. What I'm saying is this, though, when there's more of a potential for fraudulent activity, you can't blame people for saying, I don't trust this, even if there's no proof of fraudulent activity, because the same people who see that potential represented in that structure of the system will believe the system itself is the one hiding it. And so the idea that there's no evidence to those people who believe that there is fraudulent activity is not going to convince them. You have to convince them. You have to convince them that the system itself is secure. I and in Georgia in particular, that was not done. No matter how much you or Stacey Abrams think it was, it was not done.
if I, if I was going to restrict something in any way or make it more difficult to vote in any capacity, whether with less mail-in ballots or any type of regulation, I would want somebody to demonstrate to me that these regulations put in place, that these risks are legitimate. Somebody would need to like, well, show me that. And the problem is I, 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 I haven't seen that at all in Georgia. There is a secure. There's a security risk, though. There's a potential, even if you haven't seen the. Thank goodness we haven't really seen that. Although there are people who think we have seen that and who have. People think a lot evidence. of things. I don't. I, yeah. I don't. I don't really. Sure, they do. Sure, but the problem is. Do you agree with them or do you rational, disagree with them? Do you think? A, do you a think? Rational, there's no, no, Dylan. There's a rational basis for that thought. If there are more drop boxes than than is proportional to a county, and they're not and they're not monitored, there are people who could say even if there's no even if there's no proof, who could say couldn't it be used fraudulently. And then when they hear this is a fraud, they could say, well, that makes sense. They're connecting it to other ideas in their mind. Whether there is no proof or not is not the problem here. The problem here is that there is a hint of impropriety in, in the structural integrity of the system, and that's why people think. The election was rigged, at least in Georgia. There are other reasons in other country, in other states that are different, like Arizona. Different, different, different. Georgia, in my opinion, is the most plausible basis, even though I don't believe that Georgia was rigged. I think that Stacey Abrams was a very proficient organizer. She won fair and square. But I understand people who do believe it was rigged believe it was rigged. I get, I get it because Raffensperger acquiesced, gave the Democrats more than they should have gotten, and that could have been a security risk, even if it was not. That's my claim. And you can't say, as Biden did in that speech, that anyone who has questions about the structural integrity of our system on the basis of those facts is some kind of extremist or enemy of democracy. That's, no, that's not what he someone, said. They, are, they, they, they said he said that election denialism attacks the foundations of our public. Didn't he say that? Something what, like that. I'm paraphrasing. Tr obviously. Trump's version of the MAGA movement 100 percent does. He didn't say Trump. He said the MAGA Republicans. And he also Matt, what, election, what is the MAGA Republicans? Make America Great Again is Trump's moniker. It's his campaign who, slogan. It started support, when? No, when did it start? People who support Donald Trump. People yeah. who support Donald Trump for various yes. reasons. For various, various reasons. But the thing is, you can look at Donald Trump and approve of him for reasons that are completely different than, than the reasons that somebody else does, right? But that doesn't mean, that does not mean that you don't overlook those other things. You have to overlook it, Trump's Islamophobia to vote for him. You have to overlook it, Trump's history of, uh, I, I will say, shady business dealings, whether it comes to uh, what happened in Scotland or, or, his, or his poor treatment of, of workers, I would say is actually, yeah, I care about that. If we're going to talk about somebody who's going to be forming labor policy in the United States and appointing, you know, appointing a secretary of labor, uh, you have to overlook a lot of Trump's behavior and say, well, I like the low taxes or I like his position on, I don't know, the church or whatever. And then you vote for him. So I think somebody could vote for what Trump no. for not for non-offensive reasons. But that does not mean you have to overlook the bad things that he did to vote what for him if, over somebody like Joe Biden. Thank you, Lorna Box, for the raid. I appreciate people, it. What if some people looked at a lot of those things that you mentioned and they don't see them the same way you do? There's a conflict of visions there. Um, you may say they're wrong. They may say you're wrong. Of course. Which is why you I'm have always to right. actually debate. Which is why, <laughs> which is why you actually have to actually debate these issues and not do what Biden said and just blanket another part of the country because you believe their version of America is bad. It'd be like me saying that the progressives are evil socialists who want to groom our children. Morally I can't say that in good faith. Man. It's like I can't say that all MAGA people, people don't want to destroy the republic. And then say, well, the MAGA republicans are the problem, but the mainstream ones, they're great. Mainstream ones? Liz Cheney? The, the war hawk? The lady who's responsible for a lot of deaths in the, in the Middle East? Her? Mitt Romney? Hit. My mainstream republicans? What does that mean, Joe Biden? I mean, people who supported your your drug laws in the nineties. What does that mean? I mean, if we're talking about mainstream. The thing, I, the thing is, another, uh, Donald, it's, it's, it's Joe, nonsense. Joe Biden did clarify the next day that look, I don't mean everybody who voted for, for Donald. Tr he walked it. He walked it he back. Did. I I would I wouldn't call it a walk back. I would call it a clarification. He walked it back. I'd call it a clarification. But the thing is, the MAGA movement in this country is inherently uh, hell bent on decaying our election systems. You know, it's, it's very interesting to hear from the same people who talk so much about election security, you know, so much about how important it is being so willing to overlook a man calling a secretary of state and trying to intimidate him 
to basically have him appointed as next president of the United States by just finding the votes for him. And so when I, when I hear the MAGA movement talk about the priorities that you could vote for Trump, whether it be abortion rights or, or election security or any of these issues, you have to overlook that. You have to overlook his Islam, Islamophobia. You have to overlook the fact that his vice presidential uh, nominee, Mike Pence, has his own history of political skeletons in the closet when it comes to homosexual issues, uh, or queer issues. Or you need to overlook sure. Rex Tillerson being appointed um, secretary of state, being an oil and gas company lobbyist. You need to overlook John Bolton being appointed or his history sure. with Steve Bannon or all of the things that Donald Trump did or his trying to strong arm Zelensky with, with it, aid it, for info information on his political opponents. You have to overlook it all. It, it, is it overlooking or is it weighing it less than other people? I'm sure that you don't agree with Joe Biden and everything he's done in his life. A lot of Democrats have to overlook the of fact course. that he's responsible for the high levels of incarceration for black men in the 90s and said anyone pushing poison should be locked up for a very long time. Joe Biden was a instrumental. He wasn't the only one. Chuck Rangel was too. Many people were, but he was instrumental to that. Democrats overlooked that. Democrats overlooked Kamala Harris's record as Attorney General of California, where she prosecuted a lot of people for nonviolent crimes as well. Wait, doing isn't that stuff. collectivist? How is a collectivist pull up people's records? No, it's not a collectivist to pull up his record. It's just weird for, for me to hear about you because I remember you complain about lefties like saying this law disproportionately affects these people. Talk about the merits of the law, but then your complaint about Joe Biden is that he locked up a lot of black basis, people. No, as a basis for rejecting that law, that's my problem. Obviously, I don't care who the law affects. I care what the law is. And since the law is unjust, pointing out that it affected a certain group of people as a matter of political calculus is relevant. People on the left talk about disparities all the time, and they have to overlook Joe Biden's contribution yeah. to those disparities. I get it. That's just, a fact. Okay, I just wanted just to know. Well, the thing is, I, I, I acknowledge it, but it's just you're criticizing it due to who it affected. Right, you said. No, I'm not. You know, I'm yes, you, it because it was unjust. Okay, it's just. No, you, no, it's don't. just. I heard you There's say. No. Okay, let me explain the confusion. I heard you say that disproportionately locked up black men, and when I heard that, I was like, you that did? was like that was a criticism. But that's not a value judgment. That, that is a fact. That is a statistical okay. fact. Okay, so why? But it's you're saying it. But you're saying it on a list of things that Joe Biden did that was bad. No, what I'm saying, I'm saying there are things that lefties have to overlook that make up with their values, okay. and that's that. That's the truth. I mean. Let's just talk about disproportionate impacts of laws all the time. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. I would just say that I think Donald Trump's yeah, worse. That. I would just say that Donald Trump's okay, is worse. So this is this is and, and that's because your values more align with Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. If your values more align with Donald Trump, you probably would might, might not might take the Joe Walsh route and not like him at all. But compared to someone like Joe Biden, you may think a different way. I and that's the problem here. You're, I you're simply weighing that. things. I understand wait, wait that, things, but I would yes. say I would say that Donald Trump's consistent um, objection to the democratic process or the Republican process or whatever you ever would, would want to call it um, is something that should be uh, really non-negotiable. Well, I, I, People I, of every party have done that. I have no problem with them critiquing process. No problem. But when his Clinton critique, his, it, his critique of no process problem. is I should win. That's his critique of process. That's what Clinton said too. Her critique of process was not "I should win." Illegitimate president. It was legitimate president. He was not. She, what's she, the other implication? There, to what's me, the let me be clear. I don't agree with her calling Donald Trump an illegitimate president. But to, but, but let, uh, I would say that that statement um, is objectionable to democracy at the very least. Now, I, I would say that Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are not even in the same ballpark. She didn't go into yeah, twenty six. I agree with you. Yeah, Donald Trump is ten times worse. I agree. So the thing is, no, no, she's no worse. yeah, she's no, worse. Donald Trump is ten times worse. Not even, not even a question. No, she's worse. Uh, hundred percent worse. <laughs> she's worse. Ten she's times worse. worse. Twenty times worse. She's Donald worse. Trump, Hitler, two point Okay, so yeah, <laughs> you're funny. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a just straight up comedian. But when Donald Trump <laughs> heading into 2015, it's rigged. We're going into this. This is a rigged election. It's rigged against me. 2016 general, same thing. It's rigged against me. It's rigged against me. Going into 2020, it's rigged. If I lose, it is rigged. Going out of 2020, he tries every trick he can in the book to try to overturn the results of that election, including trying to get Mike Pence to do it himself, even though he didn't have the constitutional authority to do so. He tries to intimidate state of officials. He does the whole shebang, never concedes, never concedes. They have fake electors drawn up. They have executive orders written up about seizing election machines with the military. Voting machines, not election machines. 
This is not anywhere close to anything Hillary Clinton did. I do have criticisms of Hillary's behavior after the 2016 election, but to say this is the same ballpark is like comparing Little League to professional baseball. If an objection against our election system, regardless if one objection goes 10,000 miles farther than the other one, if an objection against our system is a threat to democracy, then to be morally consistent, Clinton must also be condemned for what she did. Okay, I promise I will not, vote. Also forget, I will not vote for Hillary ever again. I don't care if you vote for her. I care the fact that she still has a lot of power in your party, and people who are also leaders in your party were the same people echoing her sentiments. That's what I care about when it comes to this threat to democracy stuff. The pro you, you can critique a process and not be a threat to anything except that particular process. That's my point. But the, but the thing is the process that Trump wants to implement is a process that just he wins every time. That's the process he wants. Okay, well, give me the specific details of this process he wants well, to Well, the process would be he calls, state, he calls state officials when no, he doesn't win the votes, and then he tells them, find no, me the don't. votes, like he did. No, he did this it. is not a policy proposal. This is not a policy well, measure. This, You're because it's not, a, pu it's not a public pro idiot. policy. He would do that 100% again if it meant he would become president okay, of the United Dylan. States. 100%. We yeah, saw him Dylan. engage in the behavior. Dylan, everything that I've heard from MAGA-type people, whether it be Kerry Lake, whether it be any of these people, about election integrity has nothing to do with favoritism in policy. Nothing to do with that. And everything to do if, with making sure that the strength of our election systems is is taken care of. Whether that be uh, whether that be someone like Brian Kemp who passed that bill in Georgia, who literally made it a, a holiday for people to be able to go out and vote so that they wouldn't have to, you know, so it would be easier for them to do so, which was criticized as being anti-democratic or whatever. I mean, there are a lot of different measures that the MAGA people, whether you agree with them or not, have passed and have, have proposed and proselytized that have nothing to do with making a single person president. And you may say, well, there's no evidence that there's been a security breach. Therefore, that's not how you work. Let me, you can I ask you a question? Before, yes. You would say lying is bad, right? Like this is, a, this is a moral thing we both agree with, that people, the politicians should not lie, right? Where is this going, Dylan? This is a very basic You're question. Donald Trump's a compulsive, uh, a compulsive liar. I, 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 I'm not, I mean, no, I'm not I, talking about. No, I would say his movement is is a movement of compulsive liars. Okay, he, it sounds but like to an be, association fallacy to me. But lot, lying is bad, by the way. But it's still, so, so, so. Can I? You're, okay. Can I? Well, can let me yeah, continue. Well, well, sure, sure, when sure. you look at the people that Donald Trump is endorsing as part of his MAGA movement, what you see in Arizona with the Secretary of State there, Kerry Lake, all these people that he's endorsing, Doug Mastriano, uh, Mastri. What, oh, mm -hmm. the dude in Pennsylvania. What's the, something that you can see that's like consistent between them is that they all have accepted a second reality, an alternative universe, one that diverged from ours on November 3rd of 2020. And that was a universe where somehow oh, Trump, Trump, won. Trump won and one where Trump lost. And they have completely bought into it. And they have to say it on every interview they do. And you want to know something special about this is I don't even think half of them believe it. I think this How do you is know that? I, I just don't believe that I want to believe it. Because if they do believe yes, it, that makes sense. Because it, you don't believe it. I don't believe it because it's very stupid. And I would like this to believe okay. that people who are so successful that they're able to get to the highest levels that they're getting to in politics are not that unbelievably stupid. Uh, okay. Ep epistemic humility is about being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes and understand their perspective. And I, I just went through a big, long thing trying to tell you Fosh, thanks one for the raid. of many problems, one of many problems, especially one in Georgia with the uh, structural of the system. And you don't think that's met merit to any, any concern, but there are people who do. And whether you agree with that or not, Dylan, you have to acknowledge that there are people who can have a rational inquiry about a particular thing that you may not be concerned about, but they are. And it is your duty as someone who wants to pursue the truth, and you want to do that, to listen mm -hmm. to them and okay. not dismiss them as much liars. One Lying moment. is intentionally not telling the truth. Okay, I'll be right back. I'll be like, sure. it'll be take sure. 10 seconds. Jazar, thank you so much for the five gifted tier one subs. Uh, thank you everybody for the Vosh raid. Uh, if you want to come up on screen, look at this chat. It's on my dylanburns.tv website. Go there, join it. You can donate there, sub there. I get all the money goes to me and staff. Every donation I get on today's stream is going to be going towards my efforts to film. I'm going to be leaving this Saturday to go film out east again. I'm going to be doing a five-day camp out somewhere close to a area, I can't say. Uh, and I'm going to need some money for that. So anything that you can provide, I would appreciate. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. 
basically that that's it thank you so much um uh the fed thank you for the private gaming okay okay so i'm back Burns so immoral i just needed to talk to the raid because i'm a i'm a i'm a businessman at heart a dirty uh sure. capitalist sure. so sure. when it sure. to me it's one thing to criticize Burns a system immoral, because you believe that the system has legitimate problems but the problem is that their problem with the system is based upon a fallacy which never occurred, which was that Donald Burns Trump was the immoral, winner of the 2020 election. That man. didn't happen. He lost. He is the okay. loser. Okay. He took the L. Um, he took it hard and he couldn't accept it. I, and these people to Burns to uh, to assure this this person's feelings man. to to help this person who is coping and seething and whining, they have decided to accept this alternate reality so they can get his endorsements but if we have people in positions of power in our government who can accept just complete bullshit when it comes to who won and lost an election and will just reject the results of a democratic election rhetoric wise escalating though though, though, though that level of distrust of our election systems that is undeserved that is dangerous because that can be manipulated by strong men like donald trump Sure. There's many possibilities that an, a, a, a false belief can be manipulated by bad people. Sure. What I'm, well, let's start at square one. Square one is you don't believe that Donald Trump won the last election. This is a belief that a lot of people have, and this is a belief that a lot of people don't have. People believe that Donald Trump did win the last election. Okay, so you stay at square one, and instead of asking why do you believe this, you presume they believe it because they want to stroke Donald Trump's ego and for their own political progression, as opposed to looking at some of the examples that I have given you in one state that could convince someone who's already predisposed not to agree with you as to why they're correct. You're not being epistemically humble here. You're being really, I think, I'm not trying to insult you, you're being really arrogant. You're saying, well, you guys believe this false stuff and I'm not even going to engage with you. That's dismissiveness to the highest order. We've engaged for the last hour and a half. Think I'm happy you have, but you're not. But you're dismissing everyone else in the MAGA movement as being a part of this fallacy. That's the problem, Dylan. You have to be willing to listen to their claims and not say, "Well, this was dismissed by all these courts, and there's no truth to it," without actually understanding why they're saying this. The the thing is, I've I've listened to these claims for almost three years now, right? It's about to be 2023, and. If I've listened to the same nonsensical claim for three years, at a certain point, I am going to get pretty fed up with it. And I know that you believe with me, along with me, that Donald Trump lost in 2020. You are connected with reality enough to know that Donald Trump lost the election and he is not the rightful president of the United States. That goes to Joseph uh, Fighting Irish R. Biden, right? That goes to the Mr. Malarkey man. The, the, the Malarca Destroy, Dark Brandon. And since you're connected to that reality, yeah, I'm a little fed up of hearing the same as, no nonsense for almost three years now. And at some point, I, I, I either have to think that this person is disconnected with reality and they've accepted an alternative reality where Trump won, or they're doing it for political purposes to some degree. Both, or maybe both they, being or dangerous. Maybe there's, or maybe there's a false dichotomy. Maybe there's a rational basis to their skepticism. Skepticism. It's not skepticism. It's complete rejection. It Carrie Lake, Carrie Lake, if you ask her, she will say that Donald Trump won in 2020. That is a yes, false lie. That is being lie. highly skeptical. That is being That's highly not skeptical being highly skeptical. Election. That is making a false claim. That's not being skeptical. Skepticism would be, hmm, I'm interested and, in maybe okay. looking deeper what, into the what happened with this on. election problem, not Donald um, Trump won. There are a lot of people who have done just that, like Dinesh D'Souza with 2,000 Mules. There's a lot of different people who have done just that, who have looked into what's going on. And these people are skeptical, and they just don't believe the result they've been given. And I don't agree with a lot, but I also understand that they have some good points. If you have a lot of drop boxes, some of them unmonitored in a certain area that's not portion of the population, there's a higher risk for fraud. Doesn't mean that fraud will happen, but there's a higher risk for fraud. And you take that with all of the problems that happen around the country, there are things that would a rational person could believe would lead to a fraudulent outcome. Even if I don't personally accept that narrative, I can see how other folks can believe it. You can't. 
It's been almost That's three years since the election, and they haven't been able to substantiate any evidence of large-scale fraud large enough to overturn the election in 2020. You know it. I know it. Everybody watching the stream knows it. You're Everybody sick. that's going to be You're listening sick. to this, if it's ever uploaded on YouTube, will also know it. Please comment sure. help the algorithm. And so for sure. me, sure. It, it, it would, for it. Like, but does that mean there was a risk that there could I, have been fraud? I also know. I mean, possibly, I, I possibly, know. possibly there was a risk that, that there could have been larger scale fraud because of some of these changes, but there's no evidence that it happened. You can talk about this okay. for a few. Maybe if you wanted to, I could even give you this. You could talk about these issues for future elections to possibly stop future fraud. But if we have no evidence in the last three, almost three years since this election happened of large scale fraud, but they're continuing to perpetuate this lie. At this point, we, we need to we need to treat them for what they are, either liars, no. which is what I think a lot of them are. They're lying about what they believe for uh, Trump's favor you can say that or if you want to. yeah, well, of course, you I'm telling you, you I'm being honest with you. Uh, they're either, I think, liars or disconnected with reality. They're as if somebody played a Dungeons and Dragons game and have been stuck in wizard role play for almost three years now. Or maybe there are people who have looked at a different set of information than you and have from clues on that basis of information. OK, can you provide me that information? Oh, yeah, I can, like, send you. I don't have it in front of me, but I can, like, send you a lot of the different um, skeptical things that have happened throughout so the election. Do you, who do you I believe can, won even, the election, though? I'm not... I, I, I believe that Joe Biden won the election. I have said that. But what I, but what I said... But just because someone disagrees with me does not mean they're an idiot, a liar, or someone who's looking out for their own self-interest. They could be a rational person who maybe have a flawed conclusion, or may have even a correct conclusion, and they're looking at things that I have not been presented yet. Okay. Um, you know, it's like we, th th there's a very important quote that I think would help if the left embraced this more from Herbert Spencer. He said, "There's an iota of good in all things evil, and a soul of good in all, and a soul of evil in all things good." That, and he was talking about particularly the conflict between religion and science. What that means is, even in the thing that's, that seems to be false, look if there's even a grain of truth. Anything that seems to be true, look if there's even a seed of falsehood. That's an important practice to take because it shows humility. It shows we don't know everything. It shows that there's a possibility that our minds could be changed upon the production of some other different uh, thing that we haven't considered before or that we've dismissed before. And okay. that's my point. There are several things that I have mentioned that rational people could say, this means our system is unsecure. Therefore, you don't have to show me any evidence. This thing right here makes me not believe our system has integrity. Whether that's true or not, they may have a point with that one thing. So that's my point, Dylan. OK, that's my point. So the thing is, um, Mythos, thank you so much for the four tier ones. Burns, they can have a grain of truth or believe corrupt, something that is true man. and still lie about things or use that to get to conclusions that are not true. It, if that which, grain, which is happening all the time. Carrie Lake is doing it. She's a liar. Burns, she's a damn dirty liar. How do you know liar. she's lying? Are you, in, because are you, are you inside Joe, her head? Because you Joe Biden. Head? Because Joe Biden won. She's lying about the results of the election. Okay, so you disagree she's with either, her conclusion she's about either, the election. We, no. I disagree with her interpretation of the facts Burns, because she's wrong. Immoral. Joe Biden won. Corrupt, bankrupt man. You disagree with her conclusion about the election, and so you're calling her a liar instead of actually considering. This is that like she talking to somebody who says the earth is flat. I'm going to say, Burn. no, it no, isn't. You're lying. This is. This is 100% the same. No, no, it's this a matter of possibility. The same. No, it's, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. The earth, we, we've known about what the what the earth is. There's no, there's no evidence. Time. There's no That's evidence. Not at all what this is. There's no evidence showing that there could have been substantive uh, enough voter fraud for the election to be able to be overturned. Zero evidence for that. There was over 30 court cases, all of which basically got thrown out. I think one or two ended up yes. going through. The, now you can say the that they were weren't. Never engaged. Yeah, the merits because, were never engaged. Because the people who who are the true believers or, or the functioners behind the, behind the levers putting these lawsuits forward, they're either shitty lawyers or they knew that it couldn't win on the merits and they didn't do their proper work. Or like, maybe how the many, politically motivated. All of them? Many of them they were Trump be. appointed. Many of them were Trump appointed yeah. judges. And there was a Trump appointed judge that Trump was is somebody. Mar -Lago stuff. Every single judge that saw all of those court cases to look at the 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 how good it was were were all corrupt. I mean, it must have been like I a dozen. No, 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 Must have been like judges a dozen no, no. to like like twenty four no, no, no. judges. You're strawmanning me. You're strawmanning me, Dylan. I didn't say corrupt. I said politically motivated. A judge, so the judicial branch, unfortunately, is politically motivated. 
Whether so you, you think you, you do you I wish do you wasn't. legitimately think there are people? I mean, this is this is. Do you legitimately think that every single judge that looked at these 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 cases were like politically motivated to agree that they would throw them out? I don't think that, but I see how someone can think that and still be rational. That's the difference. It's not rational. I mean, you would need evidence for this. You would need evidence. You would need evidence. You would need evidence for these things. The same way that you think Carrie Lake's a liar by looking at her past actions, I can look at the past actions of judges in the judicial system and dictate that they are politically motivated. It's the same exact method you use, Dylan. But the thing is, there's too many people involved here. I mean, every single one, really? Like, the thing is, I I, I, I I can listen. Is it possible? Anything is possible. It's possible that Gary Johnson won, right? But the odds of it are so unbelievably small to, to treat it with any seriousness is laughable. It's, uh, there are many different reasons why a judge dismisses a case. Either they personally don't think that it has, has standing, they think that it's frivolous, they think that, that it shouldn't go through. There are many different reasons. And they have the discretion to dismiss it for whatever reason they want to, in all honesty. And they can do that. And so, I mean... There are, I'm telling you, there are reasons a rational person could believe that things weren't going right. And that doesn't make them liars or stupid. It makes them someone who has a different opinion than you. And if their opinion had no you basis in reality, to, what is, had, this, had, is this postmodernist? No, 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 it's not. No, it's not. If, the, if their opinion has no basis in reality, I would agree with you. But I think there is a basis in reality for believing that the election was not integral. Do you, not, do you believe that facts exist? Yes. Okay. It's a fact that Joe Biden won. I agree with you. Well, I think I think that it's highly probable he won, uh, but I do think there are reasons that someone can believe he didn't win. Which that doesn't make them not, an idiot. But there's not substantial evidence. Doesn't make them an idiot. It does make them an idiot. I agree that there's not substantial does. evidence, but there's a lot of it makes a lot them... of circumstance. No, does that make someone an idiot? No, not yes, really. it does. If someone thinks differently than you, then I'm an idiot, Dylan. But a lot of They're people think. Conclusion than you. Okay. Well, I believe the Nazis went to the moon. Okay, a straw man. Well, wait, wait, <laughs> wait. That's, a, wait, that's, that's a different belief. Hey, that's, that's a, a different. That's, that's a different that, belief. That, that's an appeal. That's a. That's, 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 that's a, a different belief. That's just a different belief. That's, I that's look. My my official title is Einstein Gruppenführer Burns, and I yeah, believe that the not, yeah, that the Nazis okay. went to the moon. No, you're not actually engaging with the. I no. My my thing is, you said you're ridiculing what I'm saying to make my point look ridiculous. Well, I do it's think it's a. But I I do no. The thing is, I do, I do think your beliefs are here are ridiculous, uh, but I'm not trying to make That's you look opinion. ridiculous. I, but I do believe it's ridiculous. I make, my, make my belief. That's your opinion, Dylan, and I, I think that you are blinded by your own premises. I think that you can't see beyond your own worldview. I, I think, agree with you on this issue, but I don't think that everyone who thinks the election was stolen is an idiot or delusional. I don't think that. I, 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 I think the most I could ever give you is misled. You could that would be much more terrible than you have been. <laughs> I mean, be much more terrible than you have been this entire discussion towards the, these people. The the most I could ever give is misled. But I do think that a sig- substantial amount of these people That's def- more charitable. Yeah, but I think the elected officials, a lot of them, and definitely the podcasters as well, um, are liars. I do think that uh, because I just think they're too smart. Really? I just think they're too smart. So is Ben Shapiro he he doesn't believe that action was stolen? Well, he's exactly. One of the biggest, he's one of the biggest conservative podcasters in the world. Of course, that, that's why he's he's not being a liar because he has more attachment with reality. He has more attachment with reality. And I don't he's think not, he's lying. He, but he's not out here saying that everyone who believes in in this is stupid or de- delusional. Well, yes, or because lies. he because he needs to keep. You're attacking their character. They're, they're attacking their character. Dylan. Well, I that's I don't think they. I think a lot of them don't have good character. Yes. Yeah, this is the problem. You already view them in a in a bad light, and so you're letting that premise guide you, as opposed to actually investigating well, no, because these things. If somebody walked up to me and told me something that I knew not to be true, and it was a ridiculous idea, like if somebody walked up to me and said Lyndon B. Johnson was never president, or since, and I was like, what, what the fuck do you mean? And then like they they start like blabbing off a bunch of stuff, and I would be like, look, this is ridiculous. This is not true, and anybody who believes this is either is either trying to get attention, or they're or they're just completely misled, or, or even okay. stupid. Like that's that's all how false, it sounds to me. Man. All false ideas don't have the same level of probability. Some ideas are more probable than others. LBJ not being president, given the documentation we have, given the videos we have, given everything we have, the amount of eyewitness accounts, 
That's not probable. How probable is improbable. Joe Biden have not? Uh, how, how probable is Donald Trump winning the election? There's there's more probability to something being wrong with the election system than there is to the earth being flat. That's not my, that's not my question. Not being, that's not what I asked. That's, well, that's what I'm saying. There's the, what I'm saying. the thing is, I'm not asking you, uh, what's the probability of there being problems with the election system. Everybody believes to some degree that there's problems with the election system. My but question is problems that are substantial to undermining confidence. My, not even, I'm not saying that either. What's the probability of Donald Trump winning the 2020 election, but having it stolen from him? What's the probability of that? I don't think it's. I personally do not believe it's an incredibly high one, but it's a probability. The, the, it the, exists. The probability. It is. There's no. There's no rational basis for it. Yes, there is. There's. Yes, there's there no is. evidence for it. You don't just need the possibility there, of something being true. You there's don't, a million so, things okay. possible. It's possible that Amelia Earhart is is still alive today, but the odds of it are so tremendously no, low it's not. that giving it serious consideration is ridiculous. It's possible that Hitler escaped to Argentina. There's a million conspiracies about how he could have done that, but the odds of it are so it's so small. Probability and possibility are different. I don't talk about possibility. Probability is more important. Anything is possible, as you mentioned. Anything well, is possible. What, what's the probability on possible. Adolf Hitler going to Argentina? Probably very low. I don't Probably very that. low. I believe it's about the same level for Joe Biden not winning no, in 2020. Not even yeah, close. absolutely. Not even, absolutely. Not even because close. because there's not, no a, evidence. A, 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 there's there zero are, evidence. You've had okay. 3 years. Think about how many there people vote. Not even Think close about how many I people, mean, how many people, including are, especially Republicans because Republicans dominated okay. in-person voting. How many people a, gone okay. in the age of the smartphone camera where they could have videotaped, recorded, took photographs of a uh, fraud taking place. There, there was a there was election claim. monitors. There was all this stuff and they have claims, but none of those claims ended up turning up to be verifiable. They all ended up there either are, being bullshit people who claim or nothing. Videos. People claim a lot there of things. Who claim. And, and, how, and here's my question. How do you verify those claims when you're just dismissing them? And when the court- I've been trying to verify those claims for, over if, two, for almost if, three years if now. The court, if the court system dismisses them and you dismiss them, how can we actually verify those claims? The problem, the reason why these these cases were thrown out is because the lawyers were not good. And you can That's try to say, case, wait, no, Dylan. you can, that is the case. The problem is either the lawyers were not good or there was just nothing substantially there. And so even hearing it was, was ridiculous. And the thing is, you can say that the political motivations of the judges could have come in. There were so many judges, Republican, Democrat, all across the political spectrum that ended up seeing these cases, many of them appointed by Trump. Now, you could say that none of them have direct loyalty to Trump, even though Trump has a history of picking people specifically due to their, the loyalty factor. But... The idea yeah, of, a, cons a, of a conspiracy out. or of anything happening here where these judges work to kind of get these cases off the desk because they because they didn't want to look at the merits of the of the election fraud is ridiculous. Definitely there's no evidence. I, so, I didn't say there's a conspiracy. There are a lot of different reasons that case could have been dismissed. Those cases could have been dismissed. Many different reasons. And then do a conspiracy. Um, but there are cases that have no standing who make it into civil court and through discovery things are found out. Through discovery, things are found out. And the point that people on the on who were believed the election narrative, their, their point was, we want to get to a point where we have discovery so we can subpoena some of this data from some of these election sites so we can actually investigate this in a sort of structured way. But the problem was they never got that opportunity, and that's their argument. I'm not saying I agree with them. I'm saying there's a rational basis for believing Donald Trump did not lose. Even no, if you isn't. think those... Yes, there the is. Thing, the thing is, like, you there's can circumstantial just... evidence. It's not enough to make it conclusive. I agree with you on that. But there's circumstantial evidence that would make someone who believes that go, this doesn't seem right to me. Can we at least agree on that? There's circumstantial evidence. Inconclusive, circumstantial stuff. There's that. That would make someone. Sure. But that's the same reason why I'm people. Saying, that's the same reason why people believe in 9/11 trutherism. The same reason no, why some oh, people okay. do this all the time. People, for example, do you know about the appeal, Do you okay. know about the dancing this Israelis? Is do you know about the dancing no, Israelis? No, I don't know about. I, I don't. I don't. I know. I don't know about the dancing. Israelis. I could. I could. I could go right now and I could ring you through a million 
different because this is what I do for a living, right? Foreign policy is my jam. A million different nine uh-huh. eleven conspiracy theories about Israeli agents in the United States at this time and da 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 da. And do you know about the USS Liberty? And I could go through these. And the thing is, yeah. I'm I'm confident. Yeah. I am confident that I could put enough circumstantial evidence down here to to be like. Can you disprove that, or do you think that's not something that should be looked into? I mean, I guess maybe it should have been. Every claim. Be like, wow, there you go. Every well, why do you, why the Warren Commission existed for a reason, the 911 Commission existed for a reason. I mean, there are reasons why these investigations happen to drown out or to disprove those kind of theories. So do you think the 911 cases, Commission? Do you think the 911 Commission was enough? Do you think the 911 Commission examined everything they needed to examine, or that it answered all I, the questions? I, I, it obviously didn't answer every question, but I think it was enough. I think that it's very clear that so the Saudis, uh, Saudi-funded terrorists, perpetuated 9-11. That's very clear to me. What do you mean, evidence wait, says so. what do you mean a Saudi-funded terrorist? The, the people who committed 9-11 had, had funds from Saudi Arabia. What do you mean by funds from Saudi Arabia? There were people who had funds in Saudi Arabia. The terrorists, so okay. Al-Qaeda, all of them. When you say yeah, Saudi Arabia, I mean. do you mean... The Saudi government? The House of Saud. The House of Saud. Yes. The House of Saud is being held liable for what happened in 9 11. Th- okay. These are lawsuits that are happening. So there's not was, conspiracy theory. Okay. The, okay. The reason I'm specific about this the Saudi government did not fund 9 11 or do anything like that. There was specific individuals within exactly, yes. Saudi so, Arabia said, who yes. did that. Because yes. if I said, exactly. like, if I said America did this, but it was like five guys yes. within America. Uh, that's not what I was saying. That's not what I was saying. Okay. There are people in Saudi Arabia who are being held liable in courts and who have had default judgments okay. against them due to the family. So, yes, so that's what I was saying. I, I could sit yes. here right now and I could tell you a million different problems with the 9-11 commission, right? For example, I worked for a man, Mike Ravel. I worked with there a problems, man, yeah. I worked for a man, Mike Ravel, who mm-hmm. endlessly yeah. talked about the problems Familiar. with the 9-11 commission, right? Yeah. So I could do that. But the problem is the odds of 9-11 being an inside job after me examining all these conspiracy theories and seeing that they don't really have any merit and, the, and everything that they're saying or like just like questions or circumstantial evidence or, hey, there could be motivations mm-hmm. here. Well, there's motivations everywhere for everything. You could draw motivations from any scenario okay. on the planet. This, okay. is, this is what it sounds like when we talk about election no, deniers. Dylan, no, the problem is different claims have different scopes and they have different levels of probability. Not every claim that is seemingly false is made equal. That's why your 9-11 example doesn't work very well. Because you think that my, my proposal is just much less probable is basically what you're saying. No, that's not what I said. You just draw an I said not every claim that is seemingly false is made equal. Not every Different, claim that, means, then, that is that seemingly means every claim, every claim needs, to be, needs to be evaluated on the basis of its unique merits or lack thereof and not on the basis of other extraordinary claims so, that may not have merits whatsoever. The problem, that's what I'm saying. The problem is there's no merits to these claims. There's, there's nothing that That's would present that has evidence. I think there are. I think that there are. I could see how someone could believe there are Americans. Okay. Can, can I see any evidence? I don't think that the election was stolen, but I think there's <laughs> reasons, rational reasons, people can think so. I don't and I gave you that. several examples. Yeah, and we talked about those examples, examples and none of those stole. none of those examples were even uh, examples of illegal behavior. They were all legal. I didn't say, I didn't say illegal, Dylan. I said that those could potentially and in the mind of someone who believes in election fraud be linked to the possibility of fraud. That's what I'm saying. So the thing is, the piece of evidence you talked about were the drop boxes in Georgia and the mail-in ballots. And the extended mail-in Neither, ballots. And the extended, yes. and extended, and extended mail-in ballots. And that there could have been fraud that happened. That is true, that there could have been fraud, but there's no evidence of fraud. Now, could it be true that there could have been fraud in 2012 or 2016 or 2008? 2004, 2000, or any election. Uh, could there have been fraud from our soldiers overseas who have been doing mail-in ballots for forever? Of course. There could have always all been fraud. All different matters, but until, though. But, but We're not until, talking about but all in, those things. But until I see substantial evidence of that being the case, that's, I, I cannot come anywhere to even start entertaining the idea of an election being stolen. That's not what I'm asking you to do. What I'm asking you to do is to acknowledge that in the case of the election, not in the case of 9-11 or fire or whatever, in the case of the election, not everybody who believes the election was stolen is an idiot or detached from reality. They may simply right. be interpreting events in a way that is misled. 
not everyone's a liar either. You see, you're presenting all these false economies, and that's the problem. You're the, 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 I already gave that's you the, the problem, most. The, I already gave you the most I'm ever going to give you that they're misled. misled. That's the okay, furthest why don't I could you ever stick give with you. The, why don't you stick with the charitable definition? It's the charitable um, label. Well, because I don't think everybody is 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 deserving of a charitable interpretation. Do you have evidence that Doug Mastriano and Kerry Lake and Dr. Oz and Matt Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene and all these people are lying, or do you just think that in your soul? Um, you're right. You're right. I, I do. I do think that. In, not Marjorie Taylor Greene. I think she's a true believer. Oh, of course she is. Definitely. I've she's met her several man. times. She's a great lady. Nice, very no, nice lady. Wonderful lady. She's, she's not a wonderful, wonderful lady. woman. Wonder, you she think... said some crazy things. She said some crazy things in the past that I disavow. I don't agree with. But I think her heart's in the right place. Um, I I also have you ever? Can I tell you a story? Sure. So I I I I know a person. His name is Patrick Hillsman. He's done a lot of great reporting in Syria, right? He did some. He, did, he reported with me on the front line in Zaporozhye, and yep. he once told me a story about how he was in a Turkish like I think it was in Turkey or it was in northeastern Syria, and mm. he had to go into a hotel for a day, and he was invited upstairs to a room full of these like shorter men. You know, they were like five seven, five nine. They didn't speak any English, but they all smoked together and ate food, and they were very polite, um, very nice. And that would sound like a very, like, like a really positive experience that he had with these folks. Like, they were, like, lovely giving people who even shared some of their food with him, even though he was a wealthy American, and these were poor people from a poor region of the country. These sound mm -hmm. like good people, right? I don't know if they're good people on the basis of that, not at all. That, that, for me, that's not enough to make someone a good person. Okay. Not enough. But could you say that this is gives you some, but if you were to have one interaction with somebody and you had to make a determination or a few interactions with somebody and that's how they behave towards you, you could probably start to have some personal assumptions of whether the person you're interacting with is good or bad. I don't know how deep your relationship with Marjorie Taylor Greene is. I don't, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I don't know her that well. I've interacted with her a few times. She was nice to me. Um, but having said that, there are many things she does that I don't agree with. She, mm -hmm. the trans thing that she did in the halls of Congress thing that was bad, didn't agree with that. Um, I don't agree with things that she said on Facebook, um, the space lace, I don't agree with that. There's a lot of things that she's done in her past that I think are just, ugh, I don't like it. Yeah. And I wouldn't vote for her if I lived in her district, not, not in a million years. Having said that, I can recognize passion for what it is. Mm -hmm. And I can recognize when someone is really committed to their principles. Yeah. And even if I don't like anything else about that person, I can recognize those two things and say, in a world where everyone is plastic and they are malleable, that's admirable. So the thing is, I would say that those people in the coffee house, the hookah house, I guess I think it was a, like, a, like an apartment, they were passionate. Um, and I think they really believed in what they were believed in because they were all ISIS suicide bombers. Um, okay. my, my point broadly is somebody can truly believe in something or like truly be devoted to something that doesn't necessarily mean that they're a good person or they are deserving of respect or of admiration. Because I think Marjorie Taylor Greene is somebody that, who is great, like already proven herself on multiple occasions to not be deserving of an elected office. I, I, I think look, there are things she's done that I don't like very much, but there are also some things that she's done that I, I don't mind. Um, I think her um, calling out the administrative state, which is not really unique to her, plenty of people do that on both sides of the aisle. That's great. I think that's wonderful. I want, I want less bureaucracy. I want uh, less dictating of policy from different unelected branches of government. Um, I want less prison program from the NSA. I want less of these things. Green is against those things. For that reason, I like that. Now, there are things that she supports that I don't support. I don't support tariffs. I don't support protectionism. I don't support any of that class-based nonsense. I think I support free trade through and through. Green, the green does not, so green supports that kind of stuff. I don't support that. So I don't, I don't know her that well. I don't really have connections to people in Congress, but she was nice to me. Um, and I think that she's a little bit out there on some issues, and on some issues I agree with her. It's just like every other politician. I don't really have allegiances to, you know, like Mike Cravel. A lot of people would see Mike Cravel was out there. Mm -hmm. He was a he was wild guy, wild yeah, guy. Absolutely. I respect him, and God rest his soul. I mean, that's the same attitude I have towards Marjorie Taylor Greene. Okay. 
do you think like Marjorie Taylor Greene? I'm I not do a believe, demagogue. I, I do believe she's a true believer, but the things she says and the things she promotes are not deserving of elected office, even if she agrees with you on some positions. I didn't make a, a, an opinion on that. And maybe she may not be true. I don't agree with her on everything. I agree with her on some things. Would, would you vote for her if she was in I'm your not, district? Not, I just told, I told you if you wanted to, I wouldn't. Okay. Okay. Um, we've been talking for almost two and a half hours. Is there anything else? Yeah, we can, we, we, no, we can. No, we can, we can end it if you want to. It's been nice talking to you, Dylan. Nice to catch up. It was nice to talk to you, too, even if we disagree yeah. on basically everything. Yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure your audience is pretty... Angry or whatever. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> if, if it was Biden yeah. Trump 2024, who would you vote for? Donald Trump. Okay. Well, I, that, that a little bit down. No, I don't vote. That was, that's, that's if I voted. I don't vote. I, I don't vote. I don't do that. Okay. Can I ask you why? Yeah, I don't think, that's a, I don't think that voting is conducive to, uh, to, to political and cultural change, broad, broadly speaking. It's not conducive. If it's larger. Yeah, yeah. I think that people in Washington tend to have. Um, Special interest in self-interest, sort of public choice economics, so to say this, and 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 in mind, and they don't really care about first principles. They just care about what will get them reelected or what will um, further their uh, earmarks that they just got in that new bill with all that pork in it. I don't believe most people in Washington have principles. <laughs> and I think that people like Mitch McConnell are good. Ex- Nancy Pelosi, Mitt Romney, even they're pretty good examples of this. Um, so I don't believe that voting for the very for the reasons that pe- politicians get entangled in all this, this very web very very webs of interest. I don't think voting is particularly useful now. Um, what would you say to somebody who would say that by you not voting, all you're doing is allowing these politicians to be more unaccountable since the system isn't going to just blow up? I don't allow anything. I'm just not participating in the process. You can't blame me for what they do. Okay, I mean, it's, if like, somebody, saying, if, it's like saying if I don't. It's like saying if I don't feed a homeless person, I'm allowing them to die. No, I'm not. I'm just not getting involved in the matter. It's not. I didn't put in process the the conclusion of the well. Death. It's just. It's just if you're that would if you're with or without me. It's without just if somebody's me. a political commentator on the internet, like you on Fox recently. Is that am I correct? Yes, I'm a political commentator. Yeah, and I personally don't want. I I don't like to. I do what Andrew Breitbart liked to do. Politics is downstream of culture. I like to go into the culture and change things in cultural institutions. That's where power lies. That's why CRT became an issue in the electoral realm, because well, it was a cultural issue started well, by po- activists, grassroots organizations, and that translated over into the political system eventually. But the thing is, if Hillary Clinton won in 2016, there's no way Roe versus Wade would have been overturned. Yeah, because she would have, she would have appointed a progressive uh, yeah. judge. And so... But that's despite the fact that the vast majority of Americans are not in favor of Roe versus Wade being overturned. And and, 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 and by the way, um, sorry, there are very few elections where you elect a president where he'll have the chance to change the balance of the court. That's very, that's, that's very rare. That doesn't really happen a lot yeah. in the longstanding lives. Of, so, so not all elections are really on that level. I, I understand, but people, but people knew going into 2016 yeah. that, that the Supreme Court nominees was going to be important. We had somebody that was kind of you know, being held up for a year, sure. and we knew there was going to be at least sure. one appointee. I know Jimmy Dore sure. once shot himself in the foot when he said, what do you think is going to happen? Three appointments in a single term? What, what do you think the moon's going to crash into the earth? And that's exactly what happened. And so I think though yes. that's like one clear example of voting having a clear demonstrable impact on the lives of millions of people that if more people yes. participated but, on our side, that could have had a demonstrable effect on our lives. It can, but generally it doesn't have that kind of impact though. But why, why not participate in the system if we know that it can have an impact? Did you vote in 2016? I don't, because no. Well, I was, I was, I was, I was 16, Dylan. Would you have voted? No, that election no, no. was very. Uh, that election was very special to me, so maybe I would have. Okay. That election was very special. I, I was actually fiercely, beginning of that, I was fiercely anti-Trump. Mm-hmm. Then I, then I, at the end of that, I actually softened up. And on election night, I'll share this at the point of ridicule. I don't care. I actually cried when he won. Cried tears of joy, actually. Um, mm. so, so, so that, that election I might have done that, yeah. Okay, and you do also acknowledge that like the president has certain powers that that like the other offices, like for example, head of the military. 
You know, the chief, mm-hmm. the chief executive is the head of the military and mm-hmm. <laughs> is regularly going to like manage our like foreign affairs pretty, pretty mm-hmm. tightly. Now, not as sure. much to be quite frank, they do too much. And I think Congress should have more involvement. That's something that I believe that Congress, when it comes to things like declaring war, that should more largely be their role. And we're kind of in a lot of undeclared wars at the moment. Um, yeah. But. But, That's just another yeah. example of something that, like voting, you could have a demonstrable impact on. For example, well, drone strikes mm-hmm. have plummeted under Joe Biden's administration. We're, we're, we're yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I think it's been like a ninety-five to ninety-eight percent decrease in drone strikes from yeah. Donald Trump, who restricted information on drone strikes, to Joe Biden. Yeah. And so, like, that's another yeah. thing that you could have a demonstrable impact with your vote. Well. Whether that actually happens or not is not dependent on your vote. It's dependent on what the president does and the interest he's answering to. I so mean, a lot of you need to use your don't, judgment a lot of presidents, in that case. A lot of presidents, you can't, if a, pre, if, you, if, a, if a president or a politician or a House member or whatever, if they decide that they're going to cater more to K Street than to you, you can't control that with your vote. And unfortunately, a lot of presidents are in the pocket of K Street, in the pocket of corporate interest, of political interest. Um, Donald Trump really was his own man. He really answered to himself, which is one of the reasons why a lot of people didn't like him, because he would insult the intelligence community in the Oval Office and not give a damn about it. Most presidents wouldn't even dare to do that because they respect the institutions. Well, if the institutions are violating my rights and destroying the spirit of our country, I don't respect them. I want them destroyed. So that's just my approach. Um, I understand that I, as one voter, don't really have an impact on what happens in the Oval Office or in the congressional boardrooms. K Street does, corporate interests do, political interests do, special interests do, the NRA does, um, a lot of other different organizations do. And I may even support some of those organizations, by the way. But that doesn't mean that the the truth of what I just said is any less. So that's my problem with the system. I I could go back and forth with like why I think voting is important, but I would say I hope more Republicans take your advice. And they don't vote. Oh God! I agree with you. Oh, so no. I would say no, any Republican I, I watching hope, my stream today, no, I, 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 I think you, people... you watch Watson and you listen to him on not voting. That's the one thing I'll agree with him on for you guys that you should follow yeah, no, in his I footsteps. I wish more people my age and your age, we wouldn't. I wish people around our age wouldn't vote. Um, they they seem to be willing to sell us down uh, stream to hell in a handbasket. And I'm the devil. Not the devil at all. You're a nice guy, though. Yes, I am. I'm the guy that I'm the hell that the handbasket is coming towards. Okay. You're a nice awesome. guy. We never got to talk about it. Ukraine because, oh boy, I'd love to talk to you about yeah. that at some point. Oh yeah, we can discuss that later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure, another sure. date though. It's been like two and a half yeah, hours. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. So nice talking to you, Dylan. Nice um, talking to you too. Hope I hoped, hoped you enjoy. Hope everyone else enjoy it. I mean, I can only imagine what people were saying. I really don't give a damn in all honesty. Mm, so. It's a good skill to have. It's a good skill to have. Yeah. It's hard. It's yeah. it's really hard. Most people say it, but most people don't really mean it when they say it. I don't care because you know those feelings get me. I, I don't. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I mean, I don't. It's just, I mean, it's, I believe what I believe. If I'm a fool for doing so, I'll be a happy fool. Awesome. You have a good one, okay? You too. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.